It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. A little program note. Last week we had a little problem in the production, and uh, many of you got shortened uh, audio of Twit 37 minutes. If you got that, please refresh the feed and re-download because you will get the full version of last week's Twit. Or just forget about it and listen because this week's even better. Miriam Joir from Engadget is here. Casey Newton from The Verge. We've got Patrick Norton, Patrick Beja, and Patrick Laporte, plus a robot. It's all next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit. This Week in Tech, episode 418, recorded August 11th, 2013. C is for chicken. This Week in Tech is brought to you by GoToAssist from Citrix. Take control of your IT world from one simple cloud-based platform. Provide live or unattended support to all your users anywhere. Sign up for your 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToAssist.com and use the promo code TWIT. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TWIT8. And by stamps.com. Use stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, visit stamps.com now, click on the microphone, and enter TWIT. And by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used Samsung Galaxy, iPhone, or other smartphone is worth at gazelle.com. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show that covers the week's tech news. i to turn into Minnie Pearl for a moment there. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's because I'm wearing a strange hat. Brought to me by Patrick Norton. Hey. Hey, Patrick. Good to see you again. Pleasure to be here, sir. My old partner for the Screensavers, a host of Techzilla, and a man who, with aplomb and skill and true savoir-faire, wore a shark costume. This week. And ran around in a circle. Did Discovery make you do that? No, actually, Veronica Belmont made me <laughs> yeah, do that. She has more power. <laughs> it, the two of you in a shark outfit, I don't know what to think. Mayhem. <laughs> also here, Miriam Joire. Good to have you of Engadget. Hello. It's actually Joire, but... I like you know. the Joire. Joire. Yeah, oui, it sounds oui. more French that way, right? Yeah, but, but do you... It's actually, it, it's Joire. It really? Even in France? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially in France. Well, that's okay, because my real name is Léo. Léo. Léo Laporte. Léo Laporte. Oui. Mais oui. oui. Mais oui. Yes. yes. Mais oui. I also, everyone. we shouldn't do this, because even though Miriam is from France, and she's allowed to do this, I'm not. And we have an actual <laughs> French person sitting here, Patrick Beja from Not Patrick. We got Patrick and Not Patrick. It's very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this show is going to be really complicated between all the Frenchness and the Patricks. And yeah, oh, it's going to be just very difficult. So it's French Patrick we're going to call you. Yeah, that works. French Patrick. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I am Leo. Oh, and this is Casey Newton uh, from The Verge. Nice to have you. First time here, yes? Yes, my first time. Be, be gentle. I, we will be kind. I don't know if we'll be gentle. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so Patrick, thank you. He brought us a box of... Tech TV swag. It was the most bizarre thing. A, 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 a basically a box of Tech TV swag I'd never seen before showed up and uh, been emptying out of storage anonymously. Unit. Anonymously, about a year ago. Not something from your basement. No, because I got to tell you, this is stuff. This whoever must have worked at Tech TV because this is unused stuff that was that was like giveaway stuff for sales. Yes. We never actually saw a lot of this stuff until they were emptying out the building at the very end, and all of a sudden the most bizarre stuff came out of well, the like, woodwork. Yeah, Tech TV, if, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was a television network. Yes, it was. Why would they give away FM radios? To go along with baseball tickets? I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> but uh, the best thing that you brought, besides the Screensavers t-shirts and so forth, is this ZDTV hat, which really is vintage. There's really a pile vintage. of stuff. If anybody actually wants to scrounge through it, we'll make it available after the show. Thank you. Um, one one you know, word of warning. You know, It's been you know in a basement why? for a long time. Why, Miriam? You know why they give away FM radios? Because video killed the radio star. Oh, and so you could, like, give this to somebody and step on it. That's correct. Yeah, <laughs> and in a symbolic act. Yes. We have one Angrily. more person actually joining us, and he's not here. He's in Atlanta, Georgia, but his telepresence is here. Don't, don't manhandle the robot. <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> Whatever you do, don't drive forward. I, I won't. <laughs> All right, Chat Mod Cheeto is here. Uh, he's in Atlanta, but he's driving the double robotics. Uh, it's kind of a segue for iPads. And uh, he's controlling it via the internet, so you actually have the ru the, the the you can run around the studio and see stuff. Yeah, uh, at least I can attempt to. I've been running into things, so. And you can see us, right? Yeah, I can. Um, yeah, there's you. There's no. Ah, he's there's turning Patrick. himself. He's turning around. Yeah, he's waiting. Yeah, so I can I can go backwards. I think. Yeah. Keep going Before. backwards, real fast. Okay, keep going. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> So this is a wild $2,500 device that I didn't have high hopes for. It takes 8 to 10 weeks to get. Mm. You can order it right now at DoubleRobotics.com. You know, I've, I've got children to pay for. I sent him, <laughs> I sent him the money really with, it, with only dim hopes of actually seeing anything and even dimmer hopes that it would be of anything of, you know, interest. And actually, it's great. You were running around the street like panhandling and... Yeah, saying I, hello to people. It would be, so the idea is you control this via Chrome or mm -hmm. another iPad or an iPhone, but anywhere on the internet, it's using... It could use the iFi's, the iPad's Wi-Fi or LTE. What's the interface look like? Um, it's it's uh, when you first launch it at DoubleRobotics.com. It's a map. Of is he actually growing and shrinking in the background? Yeah, I was there? I was I was trying to ignore that because it was really <laughs> freaking me out. <laughs> it's a great way to hit on chicks, though. I got to tell you. So uh, what you get is a map with all of your. Um, now, uh, you can't do it in Safari, you have to use Chrome, but you're going to see a map with all of your double robotics. And if you had multiple ones, you could click right. on them geographically. Because, you know, $2,500 a pop, why wouldn't you have four? Well, I think the factory floor, if right. you had businesses that were a number of places, there actually are practical uses for this. Museums, wouldn't it be cool you to have, have one of this moment where you're a guy that upgrades your phone about every three weeks. I just... You know, like, one for the office, one for the house, one for Ozzy. Yeah. You know, one to keep in the back of the Mustang. I mean, a man's got to know what's going on, and a man should use telepresence to do it. It reminds me of Dave Morin, who has a <laughs> night and day phone. They asked him, how to, when you're, how do you survive the battery on the iPhone? He said, well, no, I have two phones. I have a, a night phone and a day phone. I actually have more than that, but that's another story entirely. Uh, so, K uh, Cheeto, whoa! He's gone. Whoa, he's he's whoa, lost. We've hey. lost him. Wander around. Just please uh, be my guest. Okay. <laughs> he was reading my email. Was he? Yeah. <laughs> it's the new NSA surveillance yeah. device. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can't. Im I could There's, imagine the federal government having an a army of those. Mm -hmm. No, between the drones, the satellites, and, oh, yeah, scanning the entire internet in really real time. It. They don't really need the telerobotics. We do talk a lot That's about... That's what they want you to believe. We talk a lot about... <laughs> prism and, uh, and all of this and uh, you know it's a tech story as much as a political story uh president obama did have a press conference on uh, friday in which he said you know i'm not doing this because of snowden but we're going to look into this and uh promised uh, you know some oversight whether that's to be believed or not is but we uh, have matter. oversight a yeah. judge for life was picked and he right. picks all the other judges and they do all the oversight on behalf of the people of the united states and and they and they're in fact kind of uh, the, the the FISA court actually a couple of years ago put out an administrative report saying that there weren't wasn't good oversight and that was classified and buried. <laughs> so even even they don't actually have the opportunity to say anything. But I'm just curious, Patrick, uh, in in France, Patrick Beja, uh, what the uh, international point of view is as more and more of this uh, stuff comes out. What are people saying? International. Um, I think the, the the noise is dying down a little bit now. Uh, everyone, you know, it's vacation here uh, in oh, Europe. Oh, it's August. In France, of course, especially. nothing so happens. Yeah, nothing's working. Yeah, but uh, we were especially, you know, I think we talked about this a few weeks ago. Uh, as much as you guys are somewhat outraged uh in in europe and in 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 the rest of the world i'm sure we're even more outraged because what you guys are talking about is can you spy on u.s persons i think is the official term but no one wonders if uh you can spy on uh you know overseas people yeah we don't that's care okay. about that yeah right that that's completely yeah. okay so you have no a lot protections. of people are yeah. yeah, a lot of people here are getting somewhat angry and uh even you know it's just talk, but they're they're saying maybe we shouldn't be using uh, American companies' services like even Google or Apple or things like that, especially for uh, administrations. There's a little so, irony in that because our administration, our Congress was saying, oh, don't use uh, products from Huawei and ZTE because the right. Chinese government owns yeah, them and they can be spying on us using those products. And now... <laughs> 
the Chinese government, the French, and others are saying, don't use American products because they could be spying. Yeah, I was going to say, the German government was like, you probably shouldn't use American products anymore if you value your security. Jeez. And I was just like, damn. Jeez. Um, well, and then, of course, the NSA is taking... Uh, taking this all very seriously, they're firing 90% of their sysadmins. Because the problem is sysadmins can look at data. It's not the problem with actually... Uh, I don't understand, though. Uh, they're going to eliminate all the Snowdens. They want to, to eliminate potential Snowdens, but who's going to run their networks? They have 1,000 sysadmins, 900 of whom are going to be fired. Yes, they're going to automate it all. Oh, that'll work. With robots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't want to make this the PRISM show because we've certainly talked about this an awful lot, but uh, it just, the, 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 the revelations uh, continue to come. x serve was the latest where they're collecting everything. I like the fact that Congress almost did something. I think that was a bold move for Congress, and I look forward to Congress almost, <laughs> almost doing, doing something, something again. again. <laughs> I just thought that was great. All right. All right. <laughs> Sorry. I'll let it go. I missed well, Patrick. There's, there's the 1.6% the uh, story, though, which is kind of new and interesting. Yeah. Um, the NSA yeah, says, well, we're only touching. I don't know what touching means. Mm. Is it good touch or bad touch? <laughs> we're only touching 1.6% of all the data. We collect? Well, what was it? No, like, all internet traffic. 1.6% of all internet traffic they're monitoring. And they okay. position this as like we're only scanning. <laughs> okay, first of all, we already know that like 75% of all internet traffic is YouTube and Netflix. Yeah, they don't need to watch that. What? So that's seventy five percent. They probably are, unless there's like steganography in YouTube videos, which makes my head hurt to think about. So let's just assume there's no steganography in YouTube videos. So that's seventy five percent right there. There's probably fifteen or twenty percent they can't touch because it's secured. <laughs> Cheeto, are you there? Are you okay? Oh, he's in the kitchen and he he saw all the snack food. <laughs> Sorry, I expect to hear this banging. This Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> you can't eat any of it, Cheeto. That's the only problem with telepresence. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Can you mute Cheetah while he's enjoying the facility? Are they going to uh, talk about lava bit or the uh, other Jeff, email service? Jeff Jarvis actually made a, wrote an article about the a, a quick, I'm sure, That's very right. erroneous calculation because it's very approximate. But uh, he did a, a, an interesting calculation coming to the conclusion that I think um, uh, basically the 1.6 percent. Let me find the number here. I got it here. Uh, represents. If you want. One, there you go. Okay, so there's 1,000. I didn't know this. This is an amazing number. The internet carries 1,826 petabytes of information a day. That's a lot. Holy. Delete expletive. <laughs> <laughs> if the NSA touches 1.6% of that, and out of the 1.6%, only 0.025% is selected for review, the net effect is analysts look at 0.00004% of the world's traffic. Less than one part in a million. However, <laughs> uh, in fact, the NSA says that's the equivalent of a uh, no 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 larger than a dime on a basketball court. So that's yeah, so much yeah, better. It's, uh, it's only a dime. Let's on a basketball assume the court. NSA actually has effective spam filtering. So if they ignore YouTube and they right. ignore Netflix and the other primary video services, that's probably like eighty five percent of the traffic. Then they ignore the spam. That's ninety five percent of the traffic. And suddenly, one point six percent of the valuable information starts looking like a big delete expletive chunk, or big ass chunk, since apparently I'm a big ass phone user. Well, and the good news is, according to the NSA, NSA personnel are obligated to report when they believe the NSA is not or may not be acting consistently with law, policy, or procedure. This self-reporting is part of the culture and the fabric of the National Security Administration. So they've got, they've got good protections in place. As we learned from uh, the story a couple of years ago, where NSA, uh, low-level NSA people were passing around sex phone calls of American citizens. Yeah, you got to hear this one. <laughs> uh, so oh. I, I, I somehow don't really feel completely safe, even though I know that they're looking out for us. I think Obama did say something, though, that was relevant, which is that he believes that these people, at, the people at the NSA, law enforcement, are patriots. They're doing yes. what they're doing because they want to protect the United States from terrorism. And I think that's true. Thank goodness he also acknowledged that privacy advocates and people who are complaining about this are also patriots. 
We need to have this conversation, and we need to have uh, checks and balances. I hope he And that's means almost it. as good as Congress almost doing something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so Lava, there's two email services. Lava Bit, which reputedly was the one Edward Snowden used. And I, as soon as I learned that, bought a 10-year subscription to Lava Bit, by <laughs> the way, last week. <laughs> and uh, PGP's Phil Zimmerman had his own right. uh, a company called Silent Circle. Mm -hmm. Uh, they do silent, uh, encrypted phone calls, right. internet messaging, as well as email. Uh, silent Circle shut down its email. LavaBit went out of business, essentially saying, we don't want to comply with the federal uh, uh, warrant, so we're just going to shut down. Uh, buy. Um, uh, buy, and would you donate to our legal defense fund? I already gave him money, but he he's going to have a legal defense fund because right. basically what he's saying is, I don't want to run a business where the feds can take my records. The interesting debate I think that's come out of this is has has since the government. So let's say Leo is a secure services provider, and I can walk up with my giant ass lawyer with the full power of Eric Holden and the DOJ behind it, and say, "I want all your information, Leo, and I want it now. And if you tell anybody I'm asking for the information, I'm going to sue your ass and right. put you in prison for the rest of your last your life." And so the law, I got to say, gutsy move. He just basically pulled the ripcord on a really serious business that was really well run. He pressed, he pressed the erase button, basically. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> that is gutty because you know that he's going to be prosecuted. At this I, point. And you know what? I think this is, this, this may, it may take something like this because, you know, I have complicated feelings about Snowden, and I want to get into that right now. But but this guy is basically like, I'm putting my ass on the line, and I'm not doing it from Hong Kong or right. Russia. I'm sitting And here. I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to get all the dollars I can from all the people who maybe have a different interpretation of being a patriot, and we're going to fight this son of a bitch. Yeah. And that is a that is a that is well a an important thing to move. point out. And this is uh, you know I was all excited about Lava Bit till Steve Gibson calmed me down, saying <laughs> you know it's it's nice because he encrypts it right. on his servers, but in order for email to work, he has to unencrypt it to send it because right. SMTP is not well, generally encrypted. So basically, the records are encrypted. So if somebody serves a subpoena, right, After are they going to the be fact. able to get around it? And right. it's interesting because we've we've heard a lot of noise in the last few weeks that government agencies have requested basically the log files for passwords and the the right. salt and the salt's the interesting part because the salt's the extra trash that they throw in to confuse tools that break passwords so by asking for the salt that goes in the hash they're basically like we want to base we want to spend less time cracking these passwords and and to the credit of most of the organizations who have been called out they said no we flat out said no and it doesn't seem to have gone anywhere not that we would know because apparently a gag order is standard for anything that comes out of washington at this point because we're going to save everybody um, but it's a question about whether or not privacy is effectively dead unless you encrypt it all yourself end to end. Well, and and I use PGP. In fact, I've been uh, we've we've done shows. Know how to show know how a fifty I think it was on how to use in PGP, both in Gmail mm -hmm. and uh, installing it using GPG tool and so forth. And I use it all the time. I sign emails, but if somebody sends me encrypted email, I'll get their key and I'll add it. I have a fairly large mm -hmm. keychain right now. I'm absolutely a target. I mean, the, the presumption now from the NSA is I'm up to no good because I'm using private email. I don't know if the presumption, the presumption is well, that... Well, they said that if you use uh, the Onion Router or encryption, we don't know if you're a foreign national, so we're just going to collect it all. Well, yeah, and that's to say it's the collect it all and we'll have it on tap in case we need it later, which right. I, I think it's delightful that we may push everybody back. We may revive the U.S. Postal Service. Because it's it still takes more effort or the actual an actual uh, warrant to right. break into a letter which you don't need to Although, tap into the internet. We now know the postal service has been collecting metadata as well and taking pictures of every address, every return address, every envelope for the last some years. I keep coming back to the fact it's that no Stalin would have loved this. I know it's really it's really it scary. freaks me so out. So playing playing the devil's advocate for just a second there, and that's not usually my position. And <laughs> In this situation, the devil is the U.S. government. So let this, just to put it into context, but is there any chance that this is actually necessary in order to better protect the citizens of the U.S.? You know, is there I, any chance that this is not going overboard? No, I, I well, A, I think it definitely is useful and, and maybe even right. necessary to prevent terrorist acts. I'm not saying that, and I don't think really that's the discussion. The worry is that it will be used beyond that. The, in fact, we know, for instance, that the DEA uh, uh, has been asking the right. NSA for this information, other law enforcement, even in copyright cases. Now, the NSA says we're saying no, we have no knowledge of that. But that's my real concern. I don't have a problem 
with doing everything we can to protect us against terrorism. Absolutely. And if it's effective, that's fine. It seems to be, it might be, and even if it only might be, that's fine. A little a little congressional oversight, a little that's what public understanding on this, and then the, the retaliation as, well, then the terrorists will know. It's like, well, look, the... The, the terrorists the, know. Yeah. They've known all along. This is no secret. Uh, warrantless wiretaps have been going on since 2001. We yeah. know this is going on. But even if you... Uh, support these tools with this administration. My question is, are you going to support every administration that comes after, Precisely. right? We've created this amazing tool set so that if someone gets elected that has some different thoughts about privacy or about civil liberties, all of a sudden they have some amazing capabilities that could be terrifying. And there are also rogue employees in the NSA and other places who are uh, not necessarily trustworthy. Right. So, um, you know, it's... It, it, <laughs> Let me, let me, ABC News reported that military interceptors working for the NSA listened to our armed forces troops, people who are actively working to protect us overseas, listened to their conversations with loved ones, would gather as a group. This is from ABC. This is not from, you know, some Bob's, gathers, house, of Bob's house of, you know, angry, conspiracy theory. Right. Uh, would gather together to listen to especially salacious calls. Former Navy Arab linguist David Murphy Falk said he and his fellow intercept operators listened to hundreds of Americans picked up using phones in the green zone of Baghdad from 2003 to 2007. They routinely shared salacious or tantalizing phone calls that had been intercepted, alerting office mates to certain time codes of cuts that were available on each operator's computer. Hey, check this out, Falk says he would be told. There's good phone sex or there's some pillow talk. Pull up this call. It's really funny. Go check it out. So it doesn't take, you know, I admit we need to do this to fight terrorism. That's not the problem. The problem is people. People. But how do you solve it, though? If on one hand you think that it is indeed necessary uh, and on the other hand you said you say but if we do it, there's potential for abuse. What's how do you solve this problem? Patrick's got it right. Oversight. Yeah, the, the whole, I mean that's that's part of the American experience is the idea that you have congressional oversight in a meaningful manner, right? right? Because the the in theory, anytime the CAA goes to do something which I'll affectionately call peculiar or edgy. They actually have to go to certain selected members of Congress and basically say, hey, we're going to do this. And those members of Congress acting on behalf of the rest of Congress, acting upon the American people say, okay, we don't have that in this situation, right? So, Well, there's the FISA court. Which, which, is, not which has is never dead. rejected a single request. I think, right? okay. <laughs> a little, a little, the that's FISA court, like, I, I get the FISA court, but that's kind of like saying, we're going to set up a star chamber. It's but we're not going to call chamber. it a star chamber. We're going to call it a FISA court. Because right. courts, everybody loves courts. Courts where things are decided. And it's like, it's, it, no. It, that is not, that is not, um, I don't consider that particularly, me and I don't want to tick on any Roberts fans off, but I don't consider that particularly meaningful oversight. Um all right, we're, we're. I think uh, I think I wanted to add something to that, and I think that sure. what it what all this is telling me is that I'm just better off meeting with people in person and having discussions with them in person. And then the and drones can say, follow you. You're gonna say, <laughs> you know, I have a phone on me. It could be monitored. It could be my I have a microphone on me that's wireless, etc. But I don't think that's as big of a concern right now as all that met metadata they're collecting in, when I use electronic services from you know Google, Apple, whatever. Um, and I think, you know, to me, that's always, that's always been a plus to meet with people in person when I can to actually have conversations about important things. President Obama said a couple of things that I did welcome. One, he pointed out that these FISA pleadings are one-sided. There's no advocate right. for the other side. He says he wants to address that. Good. That would be very important. But he also said something that you've got to pay attention to, which, said, which was, we have an unprecedented ability now to gather information. We've never had this kind of ability before. Law enforcement's going to use it if they can, and they are, and we now know they right. are using it. Uh, we, as citizens, have an unprecedented ability to encrypt, to do what we can to protect our privacy, and I think that's one way to do it. Is everybody should step up and start encrypting where they can, and apparently not using the phone for any salacious conversations. It's no more sex making talk. Making sure you don't piss Knock off that anybody. right off. Well, it's 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 unless, or if you do, say hi to the NSA operative listening in. Include them. I think that would be fair. Yeah. Don't leave them out. They don't want to be yeah. a fifth wheel or a third wheel or whatever wheel they're. Uh, we're we're gonna we got to tech talk because we've got a date for the iPhone five. We got to talk about that. 
Uh, we've got experts on uh, on technology here, so let's not let's not abuse that privilege. We've I'm got, sorry. We've got Jeff. No, no, no. I brought it up, and I wanted to talk about it. It's very important. We've got Jeff Bezos buying the Washington Post. I'd love to know what you guys uh, think about that. Lots more to talk about. Uh, but first, let's take a break and mention our good friends at GoToAssist. The folks at Citrix love, love, love sysadmins. They, they, they love IT professionals, and they have made a tool for IT pre professionals that's going to make you love them. If you don't know about GoToAssist, visit GoToAssist.com right now and learn about it. It is a, a cloud-based tool set for IT professionals does three things. Now, you're probably familiar with the remote support that lets you do live or unintended support to any PC, any Mac, any mobile device, anywhere, even from your iPad or your, or your Android device. So you can take time away from the office as well. Sometimes IT guys, I think, feel like they're chained to the desk. So the remote support, and this is they've, they've done this for years. It is their most famous product. Ten years, in fact, GoToAssist has been doing the best remote support. I use it with my mom. You can have eight sessions at once, unattended sessions, all sorts of great stuff. Now they've added go to assist monitoring, and that is fantastic. It allows you to proactively identify issues before they become big problems. You can crawl the network and see all the hardware and software that's on the network of your client's uh, system. You can get alerts via instant messenger, email, text. Uh, so you know exactly what's going on. Customize your own dashboards or use pre-built dashboards. Patch man management, automation. And then they've got, this is the newest one, the service desk module, which allows you to manage, track, and resolve issues. All of this in the cloud. You don't have to manage yet another server. It's all being handled for you. It's easy to use. It's powerful. And it's free for the next 30 days. And that should be the come on that makes you sit up and take notice. Go to assist.com. Click the try it free button. Use our offer code TWIT. 30 days. Turn on all three modules. Make sure you play with all three modules so you get a sense of what it can do. We're big fans. We use it here, and I know you will want to use it uh, if you're into uh, IT or software support, any kind of support. Go to assist. G-O-T-O assist.com. Offer code TWIT. Leo Laporte here. Miriam Joire from Engadget. Patrick Norton from Techzilla. Hey. Hey. Casey Newton from The Verge. And Patrick Beja from France. I don't know what else to say, Patrick. Or, uh, from the, it um, was formerly I, I, of the Phileas podcast. <laughs> yes. Also, you know, if you want to uh, small talk a little bit, I got married two weeks ago. Hey, so I saw that. that. I saw that. I, I guess I'm following you on some social network. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny how yeah. I know more about what people like Patrick are doing than my own family. Because <laughs> my kids won't let them, won't let me follow them on Facebook or anything. <laughs> but I know Patrick just got married. The lovely woman, they're having a fun time. I know all about that. My daughter and son, no idea. <laughs> it's not weird. Just pretend to be a twelve-year-old. No, wait. Oh my God, your children are that old. No, eighteen and twenty-one, my friend. We're old. I actually had a group of. Uh, my son was uh, playing poker with a group of his other eighteen-year-olds, and I asked them, because I, I said, "You're now a focus group." Bear with me for 10 minutes because I want to find out. What do you use? They, uh, I said, do you use Facebook? I was surprised they said yes, but but not. that's not. They primarily use f Instagram, Vine they love. Mm -hmm. Vine is like their home on the Internet, weirdly enough. They do use Snapchat. I say, you send sexy messages? No. The stupid <laughs> ones. ones you know. um, it's really interesting to watch how 18-year-olds, but they're fickle. They're very fickle. So it's whatever grabs their attention at this moment and whatever all their other friends are using, and they could go... Nobody's got a lock on these guys. And they love the places where their parents are not. Well, that's true, too. Yeah. I, I actually <laughs> They all left yeah. after I asked them those questions, <laughs> actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're here, we're not. They ate all my food, then they left. <laughs> right. No, that's true. They don't want to be... And Facebook more and more is your parents' social network. Absolutely. I interviewed a bunch of teens this week for a story and was kind of asking them some similar questions. And every single one, they, they were on Instagram because for the most love part, it. their parents weren't there. And Vine. They yeah. love Vine, don't they? Well, yeah. Vine's beyond me. And we talked about this last week, but there's Vine celebrities. There was a Vine... What, like, they're getting married, right? These two people on Vine met. They kissed in Central Park. Thousands of people gathered together to watch them kiss. Do you even know this is going on? No. Does the NSA? You know, I, I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here I comes Cheeto. There, there There's a guy it. stalking me. This is so weird. He's wandering our studio. 
weird in his little segue pod thing. Is it a you fun? Should, you should put it on Vine. Oh, I should. Then, then it would exist. Yeah. I do feel like um, Vine is the, the end uh, of civilization. Somebody in the chat room said this, and I, I either I'm getting old like or it's... There was, there was this uh, Best of Vine video that was released. Yes. I think it was Break.com or something like right. that. Uh, this week, and you know, I, I remember hearing you guys talking about it yeah. last week with uh, Scott and the others, and I didn't really know what this new, you know, this if, if bubbling life on Vine was. And I saw that that uh, ten minutes video. There's some crazy stuff happening on yes. Vine. Mm -hmm. It's Which amazing, really weird. We talked about it last week. The uh, and it's over, by the way. The ball pit mean it's over. If you know, by the time I'm talking about it, it's long gone. But that was the one where you climb into a ball pit at Wal Walmart, right? And you make a vine of it. Yeah. <laughs> Get ready. Seamus is, you know, it's he's year, he's just a few months away from this. I, I will take Seamus into flood prone canyons in Utah before I drop <laughs> his ass into a a ball pit. A ball pit. <laughs> because you know what, drowning I can deal with. Yeah. Thirty two thousand children disease even yeah, worse than, than what comes home from preschool. Yeah, no it's way. Disgusting. Hey, did you hear about uh, this company? Now, I don't know what what to make of this. Maybe one of you does. Uh, Crossbar. They're gonna. Uh, they have something called resistive oh, RAM. Oh, everything. Yeah. A terabyte on a chip. A 167 millimeter square chip? Question mark or a seven millimeter square uh, chip? Like a little flash uh, chip. It's, it's the future now. It, it, uh, this could—I mean—that would change everything, wouldn't it? If you could put a terabyte of data on a single flash memory chip, also 20 times lower power. Hmm. Yeah, that's the big—that's the big thing. Ten so. times the endurance of NAND flash. They've built a working memory array in the standard manufacturing plant of one of its partners, so they can make this. At least they, once. Well, See, they say three years to manufacture, so it's not immediate. But just reinforces what I've been saying for a while now, that, you know, removable storage is on the way out. I I've mean, been saying this. Miriam, you know. I've been saying this before you were born. I remember in 1998 <laughs> saying, oh, you won't be using hard drives in the 1969. 21st century. I was born in 1969. So. Okay. Yeah, they're yeah. close. We're close, right. though. Close. You were a you know, child. Me, I was a child. I was, I was wee big. Wee big. <laughs> no, seriously, we've thought hard drives would die for years. Hey. No, no, but you know what I'm saying is like, is like our fans are always going on and on these gigantic threads on Engadget. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's happening on The Verge Everywhere. as well. Everywhere. But it's like, oh, my God, no, no more removable battery. And oh, my God, no more removable storage. And I'm like, I always laugh hysterically because I'm like, where the hell have you been for the last 20 years? I finally came around. You know, we had this conversation last time you were on, Miriam, because I was still using the Galaxy S4 and I carried around four batteries. <laughs> I gave up. I, I gave up. Uh, you did, right? Well, and I, the Moto X is getting well, 16 the Moto hours. The Moto X is really good. Yeah. So if they, they've got to solve that the battery technology, but if they can get the battery, 16 hours is good. That means I can wake up, unplug it, go through my day, and when I go to bed, 16 hours later, I can plug it in again. That's pretty so, epic. So yeah. you know the 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 Moto X is as well as a G2 that I was in New York for the launch of this week. Um, they both have uh, pyramid shaped batteries, so it's like two rectangles, right. one smaller on top of another larger one, that form the battery, so that. You can have that rounded shaped back and have more battery capacity in the same space. And that's the magic of lithium polymer is that you can shape the battery to be, you know, to basically take up all the space inside the phone. That's exactly what they do. In fact, the circuit board is right is glued to the back of the screen because the battery is the whole back there. And it's why they don't have Qi charging, you know, wireless charging. There's no room. They got to use every square millimeter. Wireless charging yeah. sucks. I kind of like it. Hey, Why don't like you like it? It? it generates heat. It reduces battery life. It's, Does it? If they if there was like one standard and everybody used it, it well, might chi. have a chance. But she is a standard. Yeah, I think chi is going forward is going to be the standard. I okay. mean, I have I, have I don't have chi any chargers that do everywhere. anything but chi. <laughs> I do. You got a twenty-five hundred dollar robot that's wandering around the studio, being controlled by a guy in Atlanta. When I, when I, that, but that's one of the sad things about the Moto X. I would love to, but I do the Nexus Four and the Nexus Seven. I plop on the Qi charger. Okay. You do have to, Miriam, face it. I mean, let's admit it. You have to kind I of agree. carefully position it. You uh huh. Can't yeah. Just plop it there. But it's nice. It's really nice. I use it on my Lumias, and I use it on my Nexus Four, Nexus Seven, and I use it on the Droid DNA. When you notice. I, the, you know. The people that have like seven active phones are the ones that are very excited about the technology that allows them to not have to hey, plug in. A, we're the canary in the coal correct. mine. 
We're just a little ahead of the curve. That's soon you'll have seven phones. Then, then see what you say. <laughs> then that, you'll be happy to have a couple of those Nokia pillows <laughs> sitting next to your bed that you can bump your phones on while you go to sleep. I do now. Does the pillow? Do you have to carefully position it on the pillow, or does it? No, it's actually much better on the Nokia one. The 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 Nexus. I have the little Nexus half orb, and I don't like it very no, much. It falls I use off. the the yeah. Nokia one. Literally, you can like throw it on there at any angle, and it just works. Oh, I need to get some pillows. Yeah, <laughs> get some pillows. <laughs> It's all about the pillows. <laughs> but I do. I am glad to see companies uh, paying attention to battery life because for a while they really didn't seem to. The iPhone's got good battery life too. It could uh, be a lot better. Apple, Apple, but Apple controls also the processor. So, and I think that's what Motorola is doing with this Moto X. They're really paying attention to what's using juice and making sure that it's not, you know, draining the battery. The, the one thing I want to hear at this iPhone announcement that might, I know we're going to talk about this later. Let's but do it right I, I now. Would, all right. I would love to hear 16 hours of battery life right. for that new phone. So uh, I think confirmed. When, when, for, first, that it's going to be September 10th. Yeah. When All Things D says, we hear, you know who they heard it from. Katie Cotton from Apple called up and <laughs> said, Shh, don't tell them I told you. <laughs> and you know why, Apple. <laughs> you know, Tim Cook said, hey, Katie, would you call All Things D and tell them? Because everybody's getting all this attention. September 4th, the Note 3, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, the Moto X is getting a lot of attention. The 1020 for the camera. The G2, the, honestly, the G2 really impressed me. The G2 is week. a biggie. Yeah. is a biggin' like the Note, right? It's no, it's the same size as the Galaxy S4. It's got the biggest ah. screen to chassis ratio of any device ever. It's 5.2 inches, but it's actually slightly smaller than the GS4. I uh -huh. like that in a woman, a big screen to chassis ratio. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I tell you. There you go. She's got the greatest screen to chat. <laughs> that just sounds that just sounds that just sounds crazy. You said it. I think even even yeah, the but, robot but got away, away from you that. there a little bit. You know, too. she's got she's got a great screen to chassis ratio, but her bezels are a little thin. <laughs> I like a bigger bezel on myself. On a gal. There's no safe place for me like this. <laughs> uh, so you, you like drive. the G2? It's weird though, the volume rockers on the back. Well, it's super intuitive. When you pick up the phone, your, your middle sense. finger, your index, all automatically just land right in the right spot. Now, and LG you know made how? the Nexus 4, which geeks really loved. Is this kind of a worthy successor? Um, if they make a Nexus 5 out of it, yes. Yeah. And I think actually, I would actually think we're more likely to see a Google Play edition of that first. Mm. Right. They've, and Motorola honestly, has already said, or at least told me, Guy Kawasaki said, there will not be a Google Play Moto X. Because really? it's so close I, to being I mean, a stock Google seems, phone to begin that seems with, right? To be, that's, actually, that seems to be against what we've learned. They they okay. told us that uh, this is actually happening. That um, that's so, maybe got, Basically, you know, think, think of the unlocked, <laughs> the Moto X that's going to be unlocked, factory unlocked, is going to be the Google Play edition. Well, that's right. Okay, so that understand that. You'll be able to order it on from Google, factory unlocked. But what they're not going to do is put the stock camera on it, and the, it won't be a stock I think it's going to be a stock. Really, it's just going to have it's going to have that extra functionality because you have like here's there's no doubt about it to me that those two functions or three functions not not the the wrist um, the, the you know the hand the handshake thing for the camera that's useless but the um, the OK Google Now and the um, the quick peek thing on the screen I think those things are going to be incorporated into Android sooner than we think like stock ah. Android and I think that's going to be the beginning like. It might be that when this, I'm completely speculating here, but it might be that when we see the Moto X go as a Google Play edition, it might coincide with an update to uh, to Android, like a small update, like a 4.3.1 or whatever. Patrick, look at yeah, this. This is from Guy Patrick. Kawasaki. It says there are no plans for a Moto X through Google Play. Right? Interesting. But maybe he doesn't know. You know, sometimes I wonder uh, about Guy. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't see the the these functions going to um, to Android in general because the problem is you need that specific uh, low power chip. You need the be, XA. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To be to be well, listening. Well, the thing to is that the, the Snapdragon 800 and 600 actually have that functionality. They oh. have a baked in uh, oh. sub processor okay. that can do voice recognition while the main sub processor is asleep. So it's just a driver implementation at that point. Okay, so know? that's the key, and of okay. course. The, the wrist flip, any, there's already an app on the Play Store that says, I'm watching you flip your wrist. Uh, so that's but doable. Even if they sell it on the Google Play Edition, as it is today, but without any carrier customizations, I think it'd be a compelling option. Right? Okay. Uh, you know, I am coming around. I have to say, Android, I think, has now gotten good enough that it doesn't need to be skinned by carriers. That, that, uh, that 4.22 and especially 4.3 is really good the way it is, you know? 
Uh, but you want to let manufacturers like Motorola and HTC do hardware uh, additions that maybe perhaps require software support because that makes it a distinctive hardware choice. I just keep finding myself, every Android device I touch that doesn't have pure Android on it, all I want to do is gut it yeah. and get plain Android on it. Fortunately, that's easy yeah. to do almost yeah. always. The HTC One, I bought an ATT one, but I just rooted it and downloaded the Google Edition ROM, and now it's Google Edition. So mm -hmm. it's not hard to do. Yeah. So let's yeah. talk about the iPhone, though. So All Things D said September 10th, uh, almost certainly the case. Renee Ritchie emailed me, said my uh, almost immediately after that story came out, or just before it came out, I got the same call from a, from a quality source. So I think we can yeah. say September 10th, iPhone 5. I'm starting to believe the 5C plus 5S rumors. The C being the low-priced color, for C for cheap or color <laughs> <laughs> nice. and and the s would be what apple usually does which is an iphone 5 with software improvements you, you are you hearing that too miriam that is what i'm hearing too so we can we i can mean agree. I, i'm not sure about the color one um i'm not even sure it'll be a call an iphone 5 you remember i remember how they stopped kind of dropping the numbers they dropped the numbers with the ipad a while yeah. ago like so it's the next iPhone? I actually iPhone? wouldn't be surprised if it's just called iPhone. And then they might call the, the, the new one iPhone 5S just because, right. you know. Um, but maybe the lower end one is just going to be called iPhone. iPhone. I think if they call it the 5C, everyone is going to make the cheap joke. And that's going to hurt. Right. You know? Yeah. And it's not Apple. It's not like Apple. Even doing, the only reason they would do 5S is because they have a legacy and they want right. to distinguish. Um, but I think for, like, this is an opportunity actually for them to reset things and go, well, look, we're just going to make iPhones. Rumor that and won't go away is that Apple's going to put a thumbprint recognizer in the home button. No way. I hope no way. Not. Have you used Have you used a thumb recognizer? It doesn't work half the time. It's a pain to use. It's un completely on Apple. It's even worse than NFC for them. Right. Every time I check into my gym, I have to do the thumbprint. It always takes like really? two seconds. Yes. I know. It's like, like, what, like you a, live in like a secure gym? That's my question. <laughs> who, who stole well, my identity to go work out, right? That's just like, it doesn't make any sense. And, and it always takes actually, the next the, the, the reason they do that is to keep you, you from handing your gym card to somebody else and having seven people using it. This gym one is run gym by gym. the Homeland <laughs> Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> I do NSA work out at an NSA gym. I guess I should oh, say yeah, that. Oh, yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. It's in the federal yeah. building. Yeah. But the tech sucks. Like, you, you press down, right. it takes like two seconds longer now, than it should. Apple bought Authentech, which is a thumbprint, re well, like one of the biggest right. thumbprint recognizers. Do you think that they maybe have some better technology? Well, I mean, oh, the print scanners work on Lenovo notebooks on ThinkPads. That, I mean, they were using Authentech. And they, you know, so the, the but they're the, not reliably. They're not like high security. Remember high security the Moto Atrix. Remember the Moto Atrix. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> that had thumbprint. Correct. Nobody used it. Yeah. Okay, but sucked. here's the supposition. Every time you try to unlock your phone with the thumb, you had to run the, the your your finger on the edge of the phone, or even the if it was on the back, it'd be on the back of the phone. It's still like a, a completely unintuitive to run your finger yeah. along something. But what if it's on what the home button? Would you yeah, your if, your it, if it's on the anyway. home button? Yeah, you you don't. Uh, I think the theory is maybe I'm wrong, but I think the theory theory sorry is that uh, you you don't need to run it through it. Just it's just a picture. You know, it's big enough that it takes a picture of your of your thumb, right? <laughs> That's not how it would work. Well, no, maybe it is. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I, maybe I, maybe they have that now, but I've never seen a thumb yeah. reader now. That's everybody I talk to I, says it seems unlikely that Apple's going to do this. Yeah, so I, I, think I really don't see is, Apple no. doing it with the with the classic. You know, you have to run it through and you have to what hope if it that it, you do it at the maybe right we're speed. Maybe it it's like that. <laughs> you know, every tongue yeah. is unique in its conformation of taste buds. That's even more disturbing than the whole thing yeah. with the thing. Steve Jobs did talk about making icons Lickable. that look so good you could lick them. Lickable yeah. interface. It's tasty, yeah. Chocolate taste. All right, well, That's what else? And iOS 7 does look like candy. Yeah, so. it makes me want to mm. eat it. So, or bite it, I can't. So, uh, what will be the compelling feature in a next-gen iPhone? You are, you're coming into a pretty crowded market right now. Not only the Galaxy S4, the HTC One, the Nokia 1020 with an amazing 41-megapixel camera, but also the Galaxy Note 3, which will be announced on September 4th, the Moto X. All of these are and compelling. The and the G2. I mean, seriously, it's the... And the Xperia. The, Let's not leave Sony out. Yeah. There's the, well, U, the Ultra, the X, XL. Yeah, the XL. There are I guess seven that's, that's really bigger. great phones out there. That's the bigger question, even. Even if, if the 
fingerprint thing works, does it do anything for us? Is actually, it like actually a, a compelling feature? I'm going to throw all? something out here. As, as somebody's been using the iPhone for a long time, at this point, if they give me 16 hours of battery life and that a bigger screen, that could be it. The bar is so low for technology on some levels on the iPhone at this point. I think if they just give you a ridiculous amount of battery life and a slightly bigger screen, people will go nuts. I doubt over. we're going to see a bigger screen because they're going to want to reuse the chassis because they do this every time, right? And so far, they've done it every time. Like There's also the, the fragmentation the, issue. you got to be careful about making yet another resolution. Well, you can make it a slightly bigger screen with still making Retina. And like you could make a 4.5 or whatever, still make it Retina yeah. uh, as far as Apple's standards go. And the problem is that I think they're not going to do a new chassis until next time around. Okay. I also feel like uh, we've I think seen what we're going to see is a better camera. Mm -hmm. We might see optical image stabilization on the camera, which honestly right now is, is the way to go. They need that because others um, have it. We could see a xenon flash or some better flash for because you still need that when you want to yeah, capture motion. That's at not night. gonna sell phones. And that's the um, thing. Well, you don't know about that. If it's done right, it might. It's, no. it's a minor Tim, thing. Tim Cook's not gonna walk up in front of a room of people and, and no. go, and I've actually introduced a superior lighting technology to make your yeah, night see, pictures look more realistic. Could. That's exactly what he is. They, they, they might not make a fuss about it. They might right. just put it just on. Put it on. You know, what else? What else, Miriam? Because I just want to—I want the list, and then we can talk about all the things. I think basically uh, they're going to improve the screen yet again. It's going to have you know better color, better um, you know better contrast, ba just basically a better screen, but of the same resolution size, uh, if that's even possible. These are supposedly they're uh, using a Samsung part for these screens. And then uh, if we're going to see a faster processor. We're going to see. We might no, not see not. more RAM. So we're not going to see any change in storage, I don't think. Um, but it's. I think the camera is an area where they can. Uh, they're kind of falling behind right now. I mean, the iPhone five takes good pictures, but compared to what you can get out of uh, any of the Android flagships right now, it's not quite as good, or the Windows phones for that matter. Um, really, you think the iPhone five has lost its ascendancy as the oh, yeah, best yeah. camera phone? I really? think. I think it, I think so. I think it's good. But What's it's the not best great besides anymore. the 1020, which is obviously the best if you look at the. Images. I think the HTC One is still one of the best ones. Very I good. think the GS four megapixels. For, for, yeah, but for night shots, nothing can touch it right now. Even the 1020 and the uh, 925 from Nokia have good. issues um, with with color rendition okay. and low light. Where the one does that right now. If you want good daytime shots, the GS4 is still a winner. And so here's the killer thing about the G2: it combines the two. It's 13 megapixel with OIS, so you have the best of the one and the uh, and the GS4 put together in one camera. Sounds like you're hot on the G2. <laughs> I think I think it's it's basically they melded the best of the one and the GS4 in one phone, and that you can't go wrong with that. Who's gonna sell it? In the U.S., it's going to be on all four carriers. I think there's actually a fifth carrier. I think it's U.S. Cellular or something. Um, they've announced that it's going to be on all four major. It's the first time an LG phone is going to be unchanged for all four carriers, just like wow. the GS4 and the HTC One. And does they LG lock their bootloader? Will we be able to put a Google experience? You know, on that? Um, I don't know yet. Uh, they have in the past, but they also made, it's it's. It's also been relatively easy to re to to undo. I mean, it's not like Samsung and HTC who've really been a pain about it, and then they reversed it, you know, because people complained. Right. But I think what I'm saying here is like this was a it's a pretty impressive piece of hardware. I, I was very impressed with the Optimus G last year. Um, it just wasn't a phone that was successful in the U.S. because I, I'm, unless you count the Nexus 4, which is based on the Optimus G, um, because it was just mangled by the carriers in the U.S. The G2 um, is uh, has a screen worthy of the, uh, the HTC One. It's nine. It's 1080 by 1920, 423 pixels per inches, 5.2 inches. And it's it's IPS. It's non pentile Right. Hmm. Uh, it's super bright. So I mean, and it's and it's as thin as bezel, as you were saying earlier when you were, you know, extra you were joking thin. about. Yes. Yeah, it's extra thin. <laughs> but but I mean, look, the bottom line is it's got some. In, it's not like a completely crazy out there amazing phone in the sense of you know like. It's just evolution, right. but they've combined all the right bits, so they have potential there. And if they can market it right, they might be able to sell a whole bunch of them at Christmas. Or two hundred or three hundred dollars. We don't know contract. the price and availability right now. Right. So the thing that is interesting with the Motorola X is that I think it 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 appeals in the hand, and it may sell better in stores than people expect. It is certainly you know when you look at a it's beast. A great when you look at a beast like the G2, it's not it's it's not competitive. It's not at those spec levels, but it is it, something about it is very appealing because it's small, 
with a 4.7 inch screen, it just appeals. The problem with the Moto X is it's too expensive. Anybody who wants to spend $200 on contract is crazy to buy this phone for that much Because you can get so much more. It should be 100 bucks on contract. Yeah. And then it would be a killer phone. I wouldn't be because surprised. Because it's a mid-range device. If it is and, at some point. And, you so. know, it's got to happen really soon, though, because this yeah. is ridiculous right now. 200 on contract buys you an HTC One, a Galaxy S3. Right. Forget oh. it. Right. You know? $250 so what, buys you a, G, a, a Nexus 4, which is almost as good. It's just lacking LTE. <laughs> just put Skype on it and you're done. Yeah, done. <laughs> done. Done. You got the world's biggest phone. So let's go back to the iPhone camera. I think OIS would be an absolute critical feature. Optical for image camera. stabilization. I should probably define that term. Go ahead. Yes. I want to see that. Uh, that's and really that's and that's in the 1020. It's in uh, most of the Lumia. 925, 920, HTC One are the ones right now that have it. Yeah. And G2. And really, what it is is just little springs holding the lens, <laughs> right? It's no, what it is is like a motor that can move the lens to compensate for your motion based on the accelerometer. So I think of chicken head. It's probably a MEMS. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a MEMS. And you know, like uh, you hold a chicken. It's like a and the chicken head. head. Moves. Yeah, it is always stays perfectly stable no matter how much motion you put on the body of the chicken. Yeah. Ha having actually <laughs> held a chicken in the last forty-eight hours, well, I might debate that. Well, did you ever see that video? <laughs> like, there's that there's that video on on YouTube of that guy actually doing the experiment, mounting a, a webcam on a head on a head of a chicken, and actually moving it. It's perfectly stable. It, it's just incredible. Well, I wonder if I Check could get a, a phone made out of a chicken. It's the best way to explain optical image stabilization to people. They all right, here it, it is. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. A man with a chicken with a webcam on its head. There you go. You, you see it here first. So it's here your last. You the glory of super glue. Go ahead, play his audio. Let's hear it. <laughs> Happy it's chickens. chickens. I got my dad a chicken for Father's Day. <laughs> and I want to show you a pretty interesting method that chickens have to keep their heads stable. <laughs> the, the is this the video you're talking about, Marie? Yeah, this is it. And you know what? This is actually a really awesome science show. This guy does a science video on a regular basis, and it's really good. What's the, what's the name of it? I can't remember. I'll look. As soon as we, I'm, I'm full screen right now, but as soon as we... Uh, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. That's not even... I can move his body <laughs> That's why I in you. pretty much any direction. That is exactly the right. hell? Rock solid in one what the hell is going on? <laughs> That's how <laughs> this is really hard to do. So anyway, he knows exactly where his body is and where his body's moving. It chicken head. That is weird. He's moving the chicken all over. It's kind of fun. And to the watch, head is. It? So that's the Pollo really Loco. It. If I ever sell Pollo really Loco, why, but I'm sure there's that's... an explanation. We have chickens now, and, and I will my, be checking this out when I get home. Is it all chickens or just Rhode chicken. Island Reds? No, here's another so chicken. Bad, so. Look, she can do it with her anyway. chicken. Anyway, tail tricks up yeah. down. <laughs> so are they going to put a webcam on him? Solid his head yeah, is. eventually later on the video they put a webcam. You might want to forward chat. Uh, I'll forward um, anyway, here. It's actually a second no, and video. And this one, it's another video. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Okay, yeah. one, one little the, tip. <laughs> the chicken doesn't like it. The, the point is that... That's, by the way, Smarter camera. Every Day on uh, YouTube. YouTube.com slash Smarter Every Day. It's a great science show. But every point shoot that everybody ever buys currently has that built in. Every porn okay. shoot? Synthetic yeah, chicken every head shoot technology. Digital camera has it. You mean point why... Oh, I thought he said porn shoot. No, she said no, no, point, no. porn point shoot. Point and shoot. That'd be good point for a porn shoot. shoot, too, though. <laughs> well, you know, everything is good for porn. Technology <laughs> so is amazing for porn. I'm easily distracted. That's why VHS won over beta. We all know this because of porn. Because it because beta, Sony doesn't like porn. Yes, exactly. So he's going to so put a, a chicken, a camera. It's yeah. good he's wearing protective eyewear because, frankly, the well, chicken's yeah. not going to like this. Have you seen the chicken's talons? These things are frightening. Chicken, well, chickens are small dinosaurs that yes, have uh, survived the Jurassic. The chickens were chasing <laughs> the cats around the yard the other day. Oh, yeah. You don't... All right. Eventually, they get it to work, and it's actually amazing to see the view from the camera. Here's the chicken cam. Okay, now watch. The low inset is the camera itself. And now... He was a football player. Wouldn't he be in prison right about now for chicken camera I know. boxing? What is he doing? Um, I don't know what he's doing. He's he's trying to uh, hypnotize. He's going to hypnotize the chicken. I'm still trying to get over the fact that I'm the, hypnotized. He's, he's basically trying to see if he can get the head to move with his hand. And, oh, and I a see. little bit, but not He's getting really. some hand tracking. It's basically like doing the reverse of what he did originally. But anyway, if you I look feel around, smarter. you find one where he has the camera on the chicken, yeah. and it's amazing the kind of image stabilization. Okay, provided. so we want. So that's what OIS is all about, and it really helps. Even in daylight, it helps because sometimes if you're moving while you take that shot, 
it's I, never going to, it's going to be steady, right? I get a lot of blurry shots just because my hand can't hold it steady enough. Is yeah, all the time. I, I drink too you. much caffeine, so that's why. Yeah, I need it. So Tim Cook's going to come up on stage September 10th, and he's going to show chicken. this video. <laughs> I hope he shows Can the you video. Can imagine a live chicken demo on the Apple set? That'd be amazing. <laughs> you know, it's over for Steve Jobs. His legend yeah. is history. If, if Tim Cook, all you have to do is bring a chicken up. Bring a chicken wanna... with, a, with an iPhone mounted on it. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get a chicken to drive the double robotics. Like, Cheeto's had long oh. enough on that thing. Yeah, Cheeto, can you, do you have a chicken? Where is he now? Charging. He's charging. We, so what did he get? He got an hour out of it. That's pretty good. He got to drive around for an hour. Now, Cheeto. <laughs> che By the way, Cheeto can continue to, to be there while he's charging. He just has to sit in the closet. <laughs> it's timeout. It's a little timeout. Um, oh. All right. Anything else to say about the iPhone 5 before we move on? Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's just going to be an improved of every, in I'm every way. I'm with Patrick. Better If it got 16 hours battery, I'd have to look at it. I would I would be yeah. on it in a heartbeat. Yeah. And uh, better camera. It's already got a great camera, but a little bit, be a little bit better camera. It could use a much better sensor. I would like to see something with considerably better low light performance. Okay. And that's why you OIS. 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 Yeah. Chicken. Chicken vision. Chicken vision. Um, I like that. What else? They always have funny names for their technology, right? With the retina and the yeah. thing and the stuff. Yeah. Chicken vision works. I chicken think vision. There's something there. Now with more poultry. Uh, the <laughs> iPhone 5P. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah, that's what the C stands for. Chicken. For chicken. For chicken. <laughs> iPhone 5 C is for chicken. Ah, uh, boy. Why not? <laughs> Why not? That's what I say. Why not? Why did Jeff Bezos buy a dying industry? We'll talk about the WAPO in just a little bit. Patrick Norton's here from Texilla. You got to see this week's Texilla with Patrick and Veronica in shark suits. It's pretty <laughs> cute. There was... Veronica was very excited to find a. We had a pile of shark suits in the office, and two of them showed up on set. Did I'm Discovery like, What's going on? send like, them? Put it on. Did Discovery like send you shark suits? I don't know. All I know is one day, literally, a pile of fifteen shark suits showed up in our office. I do not know where they came from. I do not know who brought them there. I do want to uh, ch chastise Dis Discovery a little bit. Because they're they're shark. When you say chastise Discovery, you mean chastise me? No, I'm no, here. you don't represent Discovery. But the you know they had the sh I have I don't watch Shark Week, but because you know you've seen one, you've seen them all. <laughs> but uh, they have a live Shark Week studio, right, where they're right. having the live thing, and it looks just like this. It's got portholes. It's got the things. It looks just like our studio. You, you mean like a submarine? Like Captain Nemo's. Okay, I didn't invent the Panama. idea. Yeah, it's but, not and, Captain Nemo. It's Captain Leo. Come on, get sure. it right. Okay, I just got to show you because if I could find anyway, I just I was a little hurt. They could have given us some credit, and we were going to put fish in that window. By the way, hmm. I've now regret it. You should have put sharks it. in that window. Um, well, we were going to have a what we were going to have is a green screen, and then we could actually project anything in the you window. You could still do that, but I thought sharks it'd be was Sharks with freaking lasers on their heads? Uh, anything you want. And I thought it'd be kind of fun. Laser Sharknado? <laughs> <laughs> I am so over sharks. Are you still... I mean, it's like sharks... We, we, My wife is a diver. She thinks diving... She knows about that. She, she, she thinks sharks are just the coolest. I'm a surfer. I sail. Sharks mean I'm going to die. Right. Um, and right. I, I, I hate shark fin suit. I support the sharks. I think sharks are amazing. No, don't They're cut off their creatures. fins. That's not nice. But But... But my wife's like diving with sharks is the pinnacle of human she, experience. Do you have a shark cage in the garage? Like she could. Breathe? No, we no. do not. You She's more into one. the so, whole like being down with the sharks without the cage. The real That's question so is: Is there a picture out there or a video of you in that shark suit and Veronica? In that yes, shark I was trying suit? to find it. <laughs> Should be the opening to the last episode. Yeah, that's what I thought. But uh, can we uh, see that, Chad? You got to see it. It's so good. It's so exciting. This is. Uh, where's the episode though? This it'll is be right the after episode. the pre-roll. After the after the ad. Okay. This is the first episode, August eighth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll just nice. in twenty seconds we'll join you. And what's really funny is is the is like Veronica's wearing the shark suit with the flippers, and like my arms are sticking out because my arms are too long for the shark costume. <laughs> nice. Nothing says entertainment like, like waiting for a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here you go. We should play the Jeopardy theme. Well, now this isn't it. Is this it? Are you, is it? Are you going to be wearing a shark suit momentarily? I thought I was wearing a shark suit. I thought you were too. We showed we showed it the other day. Oh, you know what it was? It's the what? episode before this. It's it's last week's episode. I'm sorry. Well, there's two oh. episodes every week. Oh, you have two weeks, uh, two episodes every week now. Mm -hmm. 
And oh you're busy. Goodness. A couple years now. There they are. Android sticks for home theater. And quite a bit more. So mm. grab a slice of pie. And get your ice cream on. Because Techzilla starts now. now. So you couldn't get your arms. <laughs> That, like literally, like that's as far as the suit would go on. So I'm like, you know, the, the arms are jammed on, it's the right. zippers it's pulled good. up to my neck. I can't get uh, all the way. Did they take the suits back, or do you get to keep those? The suits went back into the pile of shark suits, which will then go back to Discovery. For no, next I think year? they actually belong to Revision Three. Awesome, but that's lovely. Well, the best thing was like walking into the office one morning, and there were 15 people in a conference room in shark suits, <laughs> <laughs> and there's just moments that are utterly priceless when you walk into the office, and everybody's wearing a shark suit. And it's like, yeah. It'd be wow, an amazing group discovery. Halloween costume, you know, <laughs> just walk in. What do you call a school of sharks? What is the name of it? A, a shark Sharknado. Sharknado? Yeah. What is it? Is it a, uh, what is, what is the collective noun for sharks? They don't travel yeah. in groups? They don't really do that. Except when a they're pod, eating. A pod, a nest, a, a murder, a gaggle. A gentleman a here on your left actually has taken advantage of the internet and is researching the subject as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> There's two traveling together right there. The a slaughter? The internet gives us a shiver, a school, or a shoal of sharks. I like shiver. Yeah. Yeah. Shiver, shiver of sharks. sharks. The landlord's like coming. Shiver me timbers. <laughs> Our show brought to you today by Pirates and Squarespace.com, ladies and gentlemen. The secret to creating a great website, a blog, if you're an artist or a photographer, portfolio, you're going to love it, Squarespace.com. You can try it out. You know, we asked uh, last week for people to tweet us. Uh, with their Squarespace site. Because one of the things I love about Squarespace, every site is unique. Mm -hmm. They start with great templates, and you're going to have you know a great starting point. But then it's so easy to drag and drop and click and, and customize that. And so one of the ways to highlight that is to ask people to send us a tweet. We, you, we'll keep doing this. If you send us a tweet with hashtag twit Squarespace, we'll take a look at some of them. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right now to Josh and Christy. K-R-I-S-T-I-E dot com. Now, by the way, normally I would have to say, oh, don't all go there at once because uh, it'll bring it down, but not with Squarespace. You cannot bring a Squarespace site down. So just everybody now, go to Josh and, <laughs> and Christy dot com. Go ahead, give it a try. Oh, is this for is this for their, their wedding? This is beautiful. This is their story. Where's the registry? Oh, the proposal. See, this is one of the things I've said about a Squarespace you can make a site in instantly, and if for two weeks, it's yours for free. You don't even, you know what? If the wedding lasts, if the wedding, la the marriage lasted two weeks, you could just say goodbye to the site, and uh, you wouldn't have to pay a penny. You know, for <laughs> Kim Kardashian, that'd be fantastic. Here's their honeymoon on Scenic Highway 30A. So there you go, Josh and Christie.com. Here's another one. This is a photographer, Billy Newman, M-A-N, photo.com. Let me see. You know, I got to type it right. That's the first thing. <laughs> B-I-L-L-Y-N-E-W-M-A-N photo.com. Um, now, Billy is uh, a, a photographer, so this is his photography website. Beautiful, clean. I like how clean and simple it is. Look at the slider up top with uh, clickable links to individual sections. That's nice. All of this, you know, is easy to do in Squarespace. Billy's a photographer. He doesn't have to be a web designer. The image tiles that he uh, used for each section are laid out so nicely. They look, by the way, great on a mobile device, too, because everything is mobile ready. Finally, here's one. I just love the name. Awesome Laundry. <laughs> and they sell T-shirts. Awesome. So if you want your laundry to be awesome, you would go to awesomelaundry.com. And... Uh, this is a Squarespace commerce site. Now, they've added Squarespace, which is fantastic, uh, has added commerce. For 24 bucks a month, they do the whole thing. These are funny T-shirts. Liver cuddle, alpha dog. I like the vitamin G. Vitamin G? Scroll up a little bit. <laughs> there it is. Vitamin G for Guinness. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Anyway, Squarespace has won numerous design awards, and, of course, that means your designs are going to look great from FWA, the Webby, Forbes, Awards, Customer support, too, has won numerous industry awards. They just got a gold Stevie for outstanding service. Starts at $8 a month, and that includes a free domain name when you sign up for a year. Every site is 
beautiful, mobile ready, and you cannot bring it down. Of course, search engine optimized. I can go on and on, but you know what? All you have to do is go to squarespace.com and click the get started button. You can try it for two weeks, get your run of the place. If you decide to buy, use our offer code TWIT and the number eight, all one word, TWIT8, for the eighth month, you get 10% off and let them know that you support This Week in Tech. Squarespace.com. Try it free today without a credit card, but when you decide to buy, use the offer code TWIT8. You will love it, as we all do. Our inside Twit blog is uh, running on Squarespace, and we just, it's kind of sad because we have a, you know, the Twit site, which goes down all the time. It's kind of embarrassing. Our blog lives better than our Twit Maybe site. Maybe you should put it on Squarespace. I'm thinking. If I hadn't spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on the Twit site, I might have. Uh, anything else to say? No, no, no. Uh, Apple's Tim Cook meets with Barack Obama to talk surveillance. That's, you know, that's always makes me feel better. Um, Why? <laughs> sarcasm. <laughs> that's called sarcasm. Thank you for explaining that. <laughs> um, it, actually, uh, Tim Cook, at and CEO Randall Stevenson, Vince Cerf from the Google, and other tech executives and civil libertarians met Thursday for a closed-door meeting about government surveillance. I just feel that, that encouragement. It, means, it gives me great confidence. That these I like tech, what Gruber had to say about what he, that. What did he say? I'd love to be a fly on the wall in that meeting. Oh, well, we can arrange that. There's a, the technology the NSA, exists. right? Yeah. Um, Do you have friends at the NSA we can call? Seems to me having secret closed-door meetings with big-time tech executives and telecom guys is not the right direction. I don't even want to touch this one. <laughs> not the right direction. <laughs> you were mentioning a newspaper being bought by one of the most successful entrepreneurs on the Internet. What do you think? So Jeff Bezos, <laughs> who certainly, this is, by the way, it's, it isn't Amazon that bought the Washington Post. Right. It's Jeff. And he's got the money. It was only a quarter of a billion. That's not, you know. 1% of his net worth. I think uh, nothing. he used uh, the instant checkout on Amazon.com. That, that was Andy Borowitz wrote that in the New Yorker. He's a very Andy. I love Andy. He's very funny and writes these New Yorker columns. And he said that Jeff was browsing around, accidentally clicked, and bought it. But uh, what was funny is that a number of news organizations picked that story up. <laughs> in China, they actually believed it. Who knew? Um, he did not. Is hard. He wrote a check. Uh, or a wire transfer, or, wire transfer. or however you send two hundred fifty billion dollars when mm -hmm. you send two hundred fifty million. I, I just keep coming back. It's like this is like noblesse oblige. I mean, he's not gonna, he's not Carnegie, so he's not gonna build libraries. He's not Rockefeller, so he's not gonna basically pillage Europe and and open up museums. But if there's the anybody side. who knows better that the future of paper is dead, it's got to be Jeff. Amazon Bezos. I mean, he's still. I think a this lot was a symbolic nailing, nail in the coffin kind of thing. It's like, look, this is it. New me, you know, old media is dead. Um, and media and is I think he's going to recycle it into something cool. That's new media. That's it's all. not dead, but it's dying. Everything's well, you dying. You and I are dying. Well, but I'm the not dead yet. planet's dying. <laughs> Cars are dying. We're running out of oil. Oh, I'm over dying. I'm depressed. I'm depressed. No. But, but, it's, but look, a Washington Post, one of the reasons it's for sale is because they have been losing a little bit of money, $49.3 million in the last six months. Ouch. <laughs> uh, $33 million a year ago. So, you know, they're losing money, hemorrhaging money. The New York Times sold the Boston Globe for a mere $70, 70 million. I forgot the million, but it's about the same. $70 million. They paid $1.1 billion for 20 years ago. So I'm telling you, well, how much you did they pull out of it? I, I, look, I'm not saying the business model works, but I'm saying I, I'm, I'm just saying I'm not quite buying into the idea that the Huffington Post has replaced the Washington Post, the L.A. Times. I mean, because it's. You know, why do I go to Engadget? Why do I go to The Verge? Why do I go to trusted sources like, you know, PC Magazine or other areas? I do you still get a newspaper at the, on the doorstep? I haven't gotten the newspaper in 15, 20 years. Do, do, do you still get a newspaper, Casey? I don't. Uh, how about in France? Do you still get a newspaper, Patrick? Uh, well, you know, in France, we're the guys who are trying to tell Google to not index us. So <laughs> I don't know that my answer is right. But um, no, no, I don't. I mean, no. Do I'm you, sure Miriam, do you get do. a piece no. of... Dead tree, any dead trees arrive on your doorstep? No, no. no you know so who's reading doorstep? these it's newspapers? Nobody. Not, okay, what arrives maybe on my that's doorstep the point. It's the yellow pages. I it's know, and it drives me crazy. Please do not leave. Yellow pages. It goes straight from my doorstep to recycling. Why? What is this, 1995? I know. 
Like, so well, maybe, you know, maybe Bezos is thinking, there, there are two possibilities there, I guess. That one, he buys it because, you know, he wants a toy to play with and he thinks it's going to be fun or whatever. The other <laughs> possibility is the act, he actually has a, to, a, a use for it. And a lot of people are getting into uh, content creation and, you know, creating an ecosystem. And maybe that's something that he's banking on to somehow integrate into the Kindle or Amazon offering even. And, and he wants to use it to actually deliver news as part of the Amazon experience, which might be a differentiating factor, uh, you know, for, for that kind of uh, device. If, if, if he can somehow repurpose the, the, the trusted source nature uh, of the newspaper and integrate it into the, the Amazon Prime or the Kindle somehow, I think it could give him a leg up. Definitely. I think that's exactly right. What the Washington Post does every day has a lot of value. It reaches a very elite audience. Um, and Amazon, even though it's this is a Bezos property, Amazon's been doing all sorts of things with content creation. Right. Look at the Amazon original series that they've mm -hmm. been creating. Uh, I think it's very um, sort of feasible that we might see Washington Post content on Does he devices. Does he stop printing? Just shut down the printing press? Well, he has said, he has said in interviews before that right. eventually that... that print will go away. Right. So Even was, the New York Times publisher said we're not going to print the New York Times much longer. That's right. But, you know, I mean, those newspapers are caught in a crunch where at the moment, the majority of their revenues are still coming from those print ads, even though folks like us aren't subscribing to them. It's there dwindling. is still that elite dwindling. audience. Yeah, that, that is... Uh, I think it's ads. still a valuable brand and he's, you know, it's smart of him to buy this brand and do something new with it right. that um, takes advantage of all the good things about the Washington Post. You know, it's, it's a known for, you know, obviously uh, a lot of journalistic integrity. Um, and, and I think that that is a good idea, especially if we can now somehow tie it back into Amazon or the Kindle with some kind of deal, you know? Do you think it's philanthropy or is it a business decision? I yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, let's not discount the influence that Bezos is buying here, right? Like at a time right. when tech policy headlines are in the news every single day, how long did we just spend talking about tech policy you right. know, when it comes to the NSA? He now has sort of the, the prime organ in D.C. media circles to reach the key decision makers on a lot of issues that are important to Amazon. He wrote, there will, of course, this is his letter to uh, Washington Post employees, be change at the Post over the coming years. That's essential, would have happened with or without me. Uh, the internet is transforming every element of the news business, shortening news cycles. That's one problem, mm -hmm. right? Twitter's faster than any newspaper can And it's be. so often so profoundly wrong on such yeah, a large that's scale. That's fine. I think people can live with that, right? I mean, what? so, so what do we do? We're not, uh, we don't try to cover the news in a timely fashion. We try to analyze it sure. on this show. Uh, because, we, you know, I can't keep up. I'd have to have a... <laughs> Same thing with Texilla, right? You can't. Oh, well, you, you don't attempt to do live news well, coverage. Every, yeah, I mean, the, you, you, Twitter beats you every time. When somebody dies, where do you go? Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking much <laughs> larger on that. Not where do they go? That's it's, another question. It's kind of metaphysical time. for yeah. Twitter. Where Man. do you go? Though? Um, so he's 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 buying. I I think it's philanthropic. My guess is it's not a business move. He's not expecting to make money on it. He can afford to lose money. It's philanthropic. He believes that this is an important institution which needs to be preserved and would like to participate in the reinvention of journalism. So journalism is going to be taken care of by the wealthiest people in America who are going to perpetuate it. Always has it. been, my friend. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good point. <laughs> that's nothing new. <laughs> no, no, I'm thinking about like the L.A. Times and... and, 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 and I agree. Uh, the fourth estate really is important. And he says this, by the way. Journalism plays a critical role in a free society. And the Washington Post is the hometown paper of the capital city of the United States is especially important. So, you know, clearly this is an important um, uh, symbol of, of true journalism, of keeping government honest. And I hope that he, I'd love to see him sink $100 million a year into this sucker. Just to hammer on Congress? No, just to, to, to tell, tell the truth. Just to hammer on Congress? Well, that would be part of telling the <laughs> truth, certainly. Uh, speaking truth to power. Isn't that what good journalism does one would hope interestingly the washington post profiled him today and he declined to comment <laughs> i thought that was interesting <laughs> i'm not talking to you press you guys will twist it all around isn't that funny mm -hmm. you may own a newspaper but he doesn't mean you have to trust them that's right he said what he has to say now go away
He did imply that he's going to let the people who run the paper continue to run the paper, at least for now. And he thanked them for uh, for staying on. And you can imagine a situation uh, it, like this where the, the editorial leadership oh, might yeah. say, hey, we're we don't like here. what we see here. Yeah. But um, I think a lot of journalists at The Post were really excited by this. And I have friends at other newspapers that I talk with after this that said, God, I wish Jeff Bezos would buy <laughs> my news. He knows how to make money online. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and he's got deep pockets. <laughs> exactly. more, more germane. Of course, we yeah. had a deep pocket owner at Tech TV, Paul Allen. You mean the man that assembled the Wired World Network yeah. at the time the entire world went wireless? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy. Different kind of dude. Yeah, Bezos may be more of a visionary, huh? You think? Yeah. It was uh, <laughs> Steve Jobs who said that he didn't want the world to descend into what, uh, what did he say, into a nation of bloggers, I think? Steve uh, was maybe deeply they conservative. All... It's yeah. kind of funny. I mean, in that, res in that regard, he didn't think podcasts were much either. He was a kind of old-fashioned hippie. Little did he know. Yeah. Maybe Google should buy one and Apple should buy one and, you know, let's say... That's the logical uh, thing. Yeah. But that's what it's Patrick just, was saying. God, do you want these guys deciding what gets covered? Uh, well, then you'll have to basically buy an Android phone to get access to the LA Times <laughs> and an iPhone to get access to the <laughs> New York Times see, see, and a Kindle Fire back, to get access this, to the Post. This goes back to what we were talking about with Leo earlier. Seven phones. This makes perfect sense. <laughs> One for each We're newspaper. ahead of the curve. I do think, though, that we live in a world where news coverage is somewhat democratized. I mean, we're an independent operation. Nobody owns sure. us. We, nobody can tell us what to say until they actually, you know, come and... Democratized news is away. great if you can actually find the stories that are accurate and true. I mean, it's, it's also really funny because people are like, well, people have to be fair and balanced. It's like that is a mm -mm. 21st century or 20th century convention based around scarcity of airwaves. The, import, exactly. the original point of a newspaper was to tell your point of view... Uh, often ignoring all of the salient facts in the process. So, well, we try to be fact-driven here. Well, we, we, we often get, fail, but we try hard. Our audiences punish us when we well, screw exactly. up. Exactly. If we aren't, we will find out very quickly. Yes. Yeah. On every public forum that's, imaginable. That's one of the benefits of blogging, of podcasting. These are much more immediate forms of yeah. media where you have a conversation. It's a dialogue. Yeah, but, the, but it's I, very it's it's very specialized though. It, does it happen on on if you if you're very interested into a topic, then yes, you're going to go into the, the the blog network and keep informed. But if you just want to know of something that's important, then you do need need a somewhat more you know uh, curated experience. broad source of yeah, exactly. Well, if you're interested in politics, you might instead of reading the Washington Post, go to Politico, which mm -hmm. was started by former Washington Post editors who felt that online yeah. had a future. Um, they sure, said, for politics, we is, want to cover it. We want to own it. Yeah, but, for technology, but we want to own is, it. I mean, Leo, my, my point is, Leo, that maybe sometimes you need people who are not interested in, in that specific topic to be informed. And that's what a newspaper does. And it that is that filter bubble that Eli right. Pariser talks about, uh, Andrew Keene and others, where they say, you know, the problem with the Internet is you just look at, seek out the sources that agree with you and you don't hear the... But I disagree with that. I don't think that yeah. that's actually what happens. If you are at all connected to Twitter, Facebook, our chat room, <laughs> you hear dissenting opinions all the time. In fact, I think I know better what conservative. I'm a obviously bleeding heart liberal, but I think I know better what conservatives think now than I ever did from yeah. reading the New York Times. Yeah. Sure, no, but that, that's not what I was saying. What, what I'm saying is if you're interested, if you're already interested on, in ah. a topic, you're going to get the information on, on what happens, uh, you know, in that, that area. If you're not already interested in that topic, you don't necessarily have a, a broad reaching, you know, uh, uh, you news Fox source News. that will cover a lot of things and that will tell you, you know, this happened in politics, this happened in Europe, this happened in can, can sports maybe. You know? So can only the Washington Post or The Economist do that? Does it have to be a print medium? I don't know, but I'm not sure it, it can be blogs. You know, blogs are very uh, talk about one specific topic. See, usually. why not? I mean, Huffington Post is pretty broad. I see stuff. Is it still a blog, though? Is it still a blog? <laughs> okay, well, then let's not use the word blog because website publication. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I it's just yeah. as meaningless as podcast. It's an online. Web, it's a website. It's or you know. Okay, I mean, yeah. I, if you include the Huff, Huffington Post, then yeah, I, I, I agree. You can see, you know, and I think anybody browsing the web is seeing a pretty, whether they want to or not, is seeing a pretty broad range of. Topics. I know more about Kim Kardashian than I really want to know. <laughs> um, but because you can't help it. In fact, there's this new trend. It's driving me crazy. And, and they're trying to sell us on this, too. There's some companies that do this 
where you read a blog post and then there's links at the bottom. I'm sure Engadget does this. I bet The Verge does too. If you're interested in this, you might want to see this, but it doesn't link to that blog. It links out. Mm. Sometimes to crap. No, we don't. Oh, yes. You don't do that? Yeah, we no. don't do that either. Oh, good sites don't yeah. do that. But the Huffington no. Post does it. Well, it's no. the Huffington Post. I mean, yeah. the Post likes revenue. And it's, but I, aren't you seeing, I mean, is it just me? I'm seeing this a lot now on, yeah. on, on websites. Usually on tawdry sites with Kim Kardashian stories in large volume. <laughs> 27 swimsuits that'll make her look better. 13 ways to eliminate fat. I mean, it's basically yeah, it's advertorial at the bottom. It's advertorial, I guess that's what it is. And you know, it's funny, I don't see it on the on the Huffington Post, so I apologize. And the next step is be at Leo before you send those emails around. Go to Snopes. <laughs> yeah. No, but who has who doesn't have a relative that sends around emails and it's it's and you're just like, dear so and so. I know. I hate that. This is that's gonna go away. They're gonna die soon, and it'll be over. Unfortunately, um, some of these people are very young. young. I don't understand that at all. <laughs> So I um, am using a, uh, a number of social news sites, and I think this is the new. This is kind of the new thing that sometimes works. I use Prismatic, which is uh, uh, created by uh, Brad Cross, who uh, was at Google. Um, GetPrismatic.com, and it looks at your Twitter, Facebook, and others, and then collates stories based on your interests and what your friends are interested in. I've never seen this, and I can't decide if it's really exciting or really terrifying. Check it out; cool. it's free. Um, Bottlenose is another one. Nuzzle is another one. Jonathan Abrams of Friendster started Nuzzle with E-L, not L-E. Um, uh, you know, what's interesting about these is I do get a much broader range of things because some of my friends are interested more in Kim Kardashian than they are in uh, Prism. <laughs> and so I get all sorts of stuff. And some of it is horrible. But uh, it does broaden me. So it, it, I guess this would be an answer, Patrick. Uh, Let's Bejan. scroll back up. Yeah, what, what? There's something about ZX Spectrum there. That's really cool. Okay, see, see, I don't know what you're talking about, but... Uh, down a bit, down a bit, ZX Spectrum. Uh, there, uh, right there. Uh, there you go. See, so you're really into that. that. Restoration well, and repair of, of a Sinclair, Sinclair Spectrum 128K plus 2A Arabic version. Wow. Now, that's from a blog. No, Probably never nerdy. would have seen that, but somebody in my community is tweeting about it. Um... I have to say, I've used Nuzzle a lot, and I love it. Yeah, uh, It's a daily email, and it basically just counts up the number of times that your friends share a link on Facebook or Twitter. And so if you've been kind of away from Twitter during the day, which you know, you happens from time to time, yeah. you can say, oh, you know, 10 of my friends like this story. Uh, I found it really, really helpful. Like, here's a good story. Tim Armstrong, CEO of AOL, was giving a speech... Uh, and uh, apparently uh, the creative director of AOL's Patch, which is their local news network, Abel Lenz, took a picture and Armstrong fired him on, on the, the spot. spot. And then carries on. on a, he says, Abel, put that camera down right now. Abel, you're fired out. Ow. And it's uh, recorded, and it's now a story. Wow! And and so you can listen Just to the audio of that. Just remind me not to wear my Google Glass during our company meeting. <laughs> yeah, good luck. I'd love to see that, because... Miriam. <laughs> well, somebody was saying on Twitter though that if you listen, apparently at like 51 seconds of this audio, he says, "I don't care if people leak information." And then at two minutes, it's put that camera down. You're fired. Companies are a little sensitive to this. Fun aren't company. They? Well, they were also in the part of of. of divesting a large amount of patch anyway so maybe it just worked you didn't out care it was yeah. like i was gonna fire you tomorrow yeah. anyway, but i'll do it now <laughs> you know what maybe That's here's pretty the brutal here's the story about the iphone 5s featuring a convex sapphire home button with fingerprint sensor a lot of people talking about this including ming chi kuo who uh, is often talking about apple not always correctly i think that's where the story comes from is mm. ming chi kuo Google, uh, I mean, gold prices and silver outlooks. Yeah, I wouldn't, I don't really care about that, but it's in there, AOL QT results. So to me, I guess one of the reasons I use Prismatic or Nuzzle <laughs> mm -hmm. is because of the variety. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know who Coco Ice is, but I'm glad to know that he or she is in trouble over unpaid debts. Hate it when that happens. I hate it when that Poor happens. Poor Coco Ice. I don't, <laughs> so sad. How did Ashton Kutcher prepare for his role as Steve Jobs? Well, let's find out. That's from Quora. Hmm. I guess he answered the question on Quora. So anyway, I, I think that there is hope, and I think that programmatic, these are purely algorithmic things like this huh. that do use curation in a sense because they're algorithmically combining the curatorial efforts of all the people I follow on social networks. They also sort of raise the question, right. why hasn't Twitter or Facebook built this themselves, right? right? They already have all that to, data. Still trying to figure out revenue models. Uh, could be. Well, we know. So you, you think we don't need uh, newspaper no, I editorializing? No, I think better. It's like Newspapers Plus, right? Yeah. Like, give me all the newspaper content and then all the blog content. Yeah.
curate it, filter it. I'm glad to know somebody else uses yeah. this. I'm just looking at me funny. Well, I'm looking at you funny because I know exactly what it's going to look like when an 18 year old develops their quote news source off of everything their friends tweet around. Well. And, oh, that's, no, that's one thing we have to teach. It depends. Isn't it depends it? on the yeah. It depends on the eighteen year olds. Depends on their friends. But but I I I spend a lot of time talking to my kid. I think it goes you know over his head. But about what's good news, what's not, where to find you know how right. to vet it. Who paid for it? What's the source? Why right. are they doing this? What are they trying to spend? Exactly. And you know what's interesting? At least Henry and I think this is probably true of that generation. They're fascinated because it's like uncovering the deep inner workings of stuff. Oh. And they go, oh, that's interesting. So somebody could kind of pay for a study that would say that cigarette smoking is good for you. <laughs> yes. And they, and they love learning that. It's like, um, oh, well, I'm going to be paying attention to that from now on. I think it's good. Yes. I think it's they naturally hunger for uh, good information and, and for how to determine good information. Ah, uh, all right. We're going to take a break. Come back with more. God, I, I love this panel, though, and I'm, I just want you guys to spend the night at my place tonight, and uh, I'll get <laughs> Quick, pizza. Get the robot. I'm in. I'm <laughs> the in. robot's coming, and uh, it'll be it'll be fun. Miriam Joar from uh, Engadget. Always a pleasure, Miriam. Thanks. You got to come up here. Have you ever been up here? You know, I'm actually coming up on Tuesday for All About Android. Um, I was almost made it up today, but it was like one of those traffic looks stupid. Yeah, and no, 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 that's fine. It was yeah. a bit too short, like too iffy. I would have loved to be there, though. We'll see you Next Tuesday. Time? Tuesday, 5 p.m., All About Android. Correct. I I'll love be there that in show. person. Which Gina means Trapani, Jason Howell, Ron Richards. And you. Yep. Leave San Francisco by 2 p.m. if you want to be here at 5. Oh, I know. It's nutty. I'm actually thinking of, of heading over like earlier and working a little bit over there. Please, you, yeah. you, you can borrow a cup of Wi-Fi. Uh, we'll be glad to lend it to you. And uh, and you can sit in the kitchen. We've got snacks. Oh, great. <laughs> well, maybe I'll just do that. I was yeah. thinking I was just going to a coffee shop or something. No, but, no, no. Yeah. Come here. No, no. We'd love okay, to have you. Okay, okay. We Done. do. You can sit in. We do, we do Mac break weekly at, at, at 10, 11 a.m. You can join us for that. Just stick, stick around all day. Fantastic. All right. Done. Patrick Norton, Patrick Beja. And uh, our newest member of our uh, Twit family, 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 Pamel. <laughs> it's a Pamel family. <laughs> Craig, New uh, Casey Newton uh, from uh, The Voyage, which is uh, fabulous. Thank you. Fabulous. Our show today brought to you by Stamps.com. I've, I've talked a lot about Stamps.com. I'm kind of become the Stamps.com guy. Yeah, there's my scale. You said I leave it lying around just in case. That's the uh, USB scale. So you always have the right postage. <laughs> I love hearing success stories from listeners who've taken my advice. Stamps.com, just in a nutshell, lets you buy and print U.S. postage. Buy it on your computer. You don't have to leave your desk. You don't have to get a postage meter or anything. You can use your own inkjet printer or, or laser printer to print the postage. And then I hear from people, we ask people, you know, have you used it? Why? And uh, Andrew uh, Kanichi, who uh, has a business, I love this business, a record shop. He has a record shop, Lakeshore Record Exchange. They sell online to customers all over the world. He says he used to go to the post office at the end of every day to buy postage for every package. He'd come with these packages and put it on the counter, buy the postage, ship it out. No more. He heard me talking about stamps.com and now he uses it for all his shipping. He likes the discounts he gets on postal rates and services. Discounts you can't even get at the post office. He likes the notification to customers because they'll email a tracking number right out automatically. It's really kind of pro-shipping. Benefits you can't find at the post office, and he doesn't have to get up from his desk. They'll even, the mail carrier, come and get that stack of packages. See, even a record shop can innovate with stamps.com. Actually, I think record shops are like, are now hip. They're like now the innovators. Lakeshore Record Exchange. Andrew, thank you for that testimonial. If you want to try stamps.com, we've got a very special offer for you right at the, right at the homepage, stamps.com. Now, wait a minute. You might say, oh, that $80 value. She's kind of nice. She looks cute. She looks friendly. I'm going to click on her head. No, stop. Above that, there's a microphone. I know a little inhumane, but if you click on that and type in the word twit, T-W-I-T, then go, you'll get a $110 bonus offer, including the digital scale, yours to keep forever, absolutely free. You just pay shipping and handling on the scale. It's about 5 bucks. You get a month's free of uh, stamps.com. You get a $5 activity kit. And best of all, $55 in free postage to use over the first few months of your subscription. you got to try it. Stamps.com. Before you do anything else, click the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in TWIT, T-W-I-T, for that $110 
bonus value. And we thank Stamps.com for their support. Hey, but before, you know, Patrick got up. He's got his Seamus is here. He's watching TV. Let, before we come back, give Patrick a little more time. Let's find out what's going on this week. Tom Merritt, what's ahead? Hey, thanks, Leo. Of course, it's August. Not that much happening in the world, but a few things we'll be keeping an eye on in the week ahead on Tech News Today. On Tuesday, August 13th, Rovio's Angry Birds trilogy catapults onto the Nintendo Wii and the Wii U. For those care friday august 16th the steve jobs biopic jobs starring ashton kutcher finally hits u.s theaters samsung's ativ s neo arrives also on that day is internet explorer's birthday that's a look at the week ahead back to you leo thank you tom merritt you there celebrate i think this is for geek week this so watch i got a video you could i'll turn off the my, sound my, you don't need the sound but i got a video going and if you click on the page and you type 1980 1980 on youtube right now Missile Command, you have to defend the video from attack. <laughs> this is so wild. So my video is playing, and then here come the missiles. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. I'll pretend that I'm not any good at this. <laughs> I actually am, of course, a genius at Missile Command. And I'll let those missiles just come in, and you see it shakes the page. And what happens is it starts destroying the video, and it cracks the screen if you let the missiles come in, and eventually you lose the game because the video is blown up. I was playing with this earlier. Has there ever been a more frustrating game to play than Missile, Missile Command? Command? Yes. The, the UI on this thing is a nightmare. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Where's my trackball? Yeah. Horrible. No, oh, well. It's pretty good rendition, though. I like it's, the it's 8 well done. Bit. Yeah. Just amazing. What they, somebody at, There's so yeah. many people at Google who are just like sitting around doing stuff that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you do with $10 billion of quarterly yeah. profits. Okay, just destroy the video. Yeah. Is, I, I guess this would be for Geek Week. I don't yeah. know. Maybe they just felt like it is. doing that. You, you can also type uh, ponies into the search bar, and uh, ponies will run across your screen. Have you seen that one? Yeah, that's that's been a while, around for a while, right? I, I thought that was well, new maybe this not. week. Oh, no. Is that new? Oh, yeah, wait. You gotta, wait a minute. You, you got to wait a second, and then the ponies start running. There you there go. There they go. There's the ponies. <laughs> My little pony. <laughs> that's new? Yeah, and it also works if you type bronies. So What do you get? Uh, well, you, you get ponies, but... <laughs> Bronies is the same as ponies? Type bronies, you get ponies. Okay. I wish that bronies would run across the screen. Oh, well, these are on fire. Yeah. That's good. Flaming ponies. Flaming ponies yeah. are bronies. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Wow. Do they have what, unicorns? What do you, what do you care? <laughs> I like unicorns. Doesn't everybody I, like I unicorns? I don't believe those are ponies. Those are unicorns. That's right. Yeah. I don't see horns on them. Yeah. But they are funny color. You know, it's My Little Pony. There's pink, yellow, blue. It's Little Ponies. It's Little Ponies. What the hell is that all about? Now they need to do the last unicorn version. That's not. Aww. <laughs> right? Aww. So, uh, meanwhile, while we're in Chrome, <laughs> anybody want my <laughs> passwords? <laughs> sure. So, yeah. I'm really curious because, you know, I have an opinion about this, but I'd love to know what y'all think about it. So, this... Uh, was a blog post by, originally by what Elliot Kember, and then uh, The Verge picked it up mm -hmm. and uh, wrote about it. It turns out, and it's probably a good thing for you to know if you didn't know it already, although I think it's been this way always, if you go into your Chrome settings, last time I did this, I revealed my passwords. <laughs> so just keep watching. You might you might see something exciting. And you go to show advanced settings. You can show it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to make that mistake. <laughs> Leo will be moving to key pass in the near future. <laughs> And uh, and you go to, uh, where is it, uh, setting? I went to advanced already, right? Uh, passwords and forms, and you'll see offer to save passwords. I got that checked, right? Of course, who doesn't? You would want Chrome to save your passwords. It saves you so much time. Now, I can go in here and manage my saved passwords. And here, well, this is safe because it's dots. No, nobody's, nobody has passwords called, Security by dots. called dots. But then if you click the dots, there's a button that says show and hey, oh hey, my hey, gosh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This has been on fa on Firefox forever as well. Yeah. This it's been around for years. years this is you should store yeah. your passwords in your browser. Well, I'm curious what you all think of this. I think it, a, a number of people picked up this story, including The Verge, and yeah. said this is the end of the world. Well, yeah, and I think the, the question would be, what is the value to a Chrome user of having passwords that easily accessible through a URL? If you forget your password, you can look it up in your browser. I think it, it's much more secure to just go to the, the website you're trying to log into and say, hey, I forgot, send me a new one. Well, uh, the folks at Chrome, when I asked about yep. this, said, well, it would be false security because 
if somebody has physical access to your machine, and they do have to indeed be logged in on your machine right. and able to access your Chrome, it's not like they can see it from the internet. Sorry, that's that's it's a great song. Apparently, an ad from ABC. Uh, we'll just pause that for a moment here. Uh, no, you can't because it's an ad. What am I thinking? Um, <laughs> it's but it's brisket. But it's, who doesn't love brisket? Um, <laughs> apparent. <laughs> Uh, apparently, the response of uh, the Chrome folks was, it's just false security. So, um, thanks to our... Oh, now. Uh, okay, this is newer. So, uh, Joanna Stern, writing at ABC, uh, has a new statement. Thanks to our users who discovered a bug... Wait a minute, this is the wrong one. Is this right? Is this the same story, August 8th? A well, bug? Hold. Thanks to our users who discovered a bug... In Chrome's import interface, which improperly represents how passwords are handled upon import from other browsers, that's something different. Oh, that's the import that's from different. Safari yeah. uh, so aspect of it. I it guess that doesn't change the fact if you that. have Safari, which is storing your passwords securely on an Apple, and you install Chrome, it takes those secure passwords, unlocks them, and <laughs> exposes them in Chrome. All right. So they're going to fix that. Right. But that won't uh, change the problem we were just talking about. Google says, uh, look... Um, it's you. It's insecure, um, inherently, because somebody has. It's a false sense of security. We debated it over and over again, says Justin uh, Shu, head of Chrome Security. But the conclusion we always come to is we don't want to provide users with a false sense of security and encourage risky behavior. Which I don't get. That. What is the false sense of security? <laughs> we want to be very clear that when you grant someone access to your operating system user account, they can get it everything because, in effect, that's really what they get. In which but. case, they should put a big banner up every time you install Chrome that says, Hey, did you know if you let people log into your computer like Ed Capolano? I want to give a shout out to Ed. He was did a, he log into your computer? No, he log. He used to log into people's computer. People would leave their at, at the early days. Their Lotus TV. Notes open, right? And he would sneak in and type something. He was a producer. He would send messages to me and Patrick saying, "I love you, I love you." <laughs> yeah, love or or he would. But what happened was he did it. If memory serves, he did it with with with. And I, I apologize for bringing this up. If you're out there, Ed, and I know you're out there. He I works at Microsoft. Yes, now. yes. Yeah. You know. um, Very but nice guy. It's, yeah, I saw him actually at CES, but he uh, but he had typed out a message, basically just just something foul and and wonderful and awesome, and and I think uh, got into a really large amount of trouble for it. But ever since I saw that message that came out, that obviously was not from the person whose name was attached to it, I have been religious about putting my computer to sleep, closing the lid, having it you know wake on password set. I also never store any passwords inside of browsers because I just seem it just seems just profoundly insecure well and that. that's kind of google's position now right. admittedly safari uses the system keychain and securely stores your passwords in there you need a passcode you need your passphrase to unlock it internet explorer does the same firefox will store them in the clear but does offer you a master password that would lock it down right because they got in trouble because right. they used to store mm -hmm. it in the clear um, but chrome's decided not to now the chat room has sent me to this great site which i highly <laughs> recommend from Microsoft, the 10 immutable laws of security. Law three, if a bad guy has unrestricted physical access to your computer, which you would need to do to do this, it's not your computer anymore. Well, yeah, but it's also, it's like people are like, I'm thinking about nefarious hackers. Well, think about your brother. Think about your children. Think about your parents. Think about other people in the office. And it's, you know, I mean, it's it's really funny. We Our, our, our current IT uh, maven at Revision 3 has enforced 90-day password rotations. Oh, uh, I hate that. Account. That's just dumb. Yeah. Okay. That is just dumb. Okay. Well, so we should leave the same password yes. on. Okay. Well, well, explain to me why that makes it more secure. Because, by the way, what happens is you end up writing it on a note because right. you had to change it well, every three what's, months. What's why secure? does that changing every three months make it more secure? The idea there, the theory there is that you rotate passwords to force, basically, so if someone does manage to get access to the passwords, they may have access to old passwords You're or you change screwed. them before they be <laughs> Well, but it's also, it's why you should be using something like, and we talk about this in Texas all the time, you should be using something like KeyPass, you should be something like LastPass, use a password manager. That would solve this, by the way. Yes. LastPass would completely solve this, and that's what so we recommend. How Tim Berners-Lee, by the way, agrees with you, Patrick. He tweeted... <laughs> How to get all your big sister's passwords, and he 
logs uh, links to right. Elliot Kember's log and a dis disappointing reply from the Chrome team. Now he invented the web, so I was going to say probably the only credit. time my name and Tim Berners Lee will ever be together <laughs> in the same sentence. For but he, he made the point: it's not right. hackers, it's not bad guys. It's right. it's how you get your big sister's password. Right. Well, because think about how fast you can do this, right? Of course, if you have you know physical control over someone's computer, you can get their passwords a lot of ways. This way, enter a URL, and then you can scroll, and then you hit show, and then you have the password. You could right. potentially get somebody's bank passwords in five seconds, literally five seconds using this. Right. Not a lot of other ways yeah. you can get somebody's password that fast. So I do... Yeah, I and, I, and I think that... Go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead, Patrick. Uh, I, j I just want to say, I, I don't understand. Let's say this lulls people into a full sense of security, maybe, but what does it... What is the issue with actually encrypting these passwords yeah, the and harm? not being able? Yeah, what's right. the harm? Is it are they actually going to be have a, a sense of security that is so inflated that they're going to have more risky behavior? <laughs> I I don't see how that works. That it's so bad that you would choose to uh, show the passwords instead of encrypting them. Look, that he, doesn't compute. He, here's an idea. You, you can sign into Chrome, right? You can have a user account on Chrome. Why not, when you try to go to that URL, ask the person to re-enter their password? Just just put it behind yeah. one and extra That's kind of what Firefox security. does if you yeah. set it up with a password, right? Justin Chu says, I appreciate how this appears to a novice, but we've literally spent years evaluating it. We have quite a bit of data to inform our position. Uh, you know what? This is a very tone-deaf response from Google. I, uh, you know, we understand that if somebody has access, you got a problem. Doesn't get Google off the hook. And I predict within a week, Google will not a fix to this because it's just tone-deaf to say, you know, we have been evaluating this for years. I just like the part where that's just not how we approach security on Chrome, which to me is someone who is, is a novice he and He says clueless. it will make users less safe. Without explaining how. Well, a full yeah, sense of what, security. Which, what does that mean? If we give the children condoms, they'll be less safe yeah, than having unprotected same, sex. You know what? It's that same mentality. All right. It's that Thanks. same mentality. Um it would, actually, the, the parsing on that he received <laughs> from Hacker News is quite instructive, if you want to uh, read it all. <laughs> uh, I quite enjoyed it, uh, and I think demolished the guy. And no, no disrespect, Justin, but I think it's time to rethink that position you've been spending years evaluating. <laughs> if this is the result of years of evaluation, we need to talk, Bubba. <laughs> the, the, the only thing that it would change would be that the person who already has access to your computer and, and can do whatever they want anyway is not going to be able to actually see and note down your password. Right. That's the only thing. I also changed. think this is so snotty to say, well, I appreciate how this appears to a novice. Yeah, saying that on Hacker News is just kind of like walking <laughs> yeah. into a bar and texting and going, I can kick the ass to any person in this bar. I think they should tie uh, Justin Shoe down with his Chrome browser at the next DEF CON and just let it rip. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> anyway, when, when novice Tim Berners-Lee says it's a bad idea, well, I guess you're right. However... We should underscore it is one of the 10 immutable laws of security. If a bad guy has unrestricted, or your sister has unrestricted physical access to your computer, you got problems. Sorry, there's a robot. Cheeto back. <laughs> Hi, Lord, Cheeto. I'm just reading my email. Hey. Again. So have you been, uh, you, you got recharged, you got filled up? Mm-hmm, yeah. got charged up. Yeah, you feeling good? Oh, I ran into your chair. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I'm used to it. So, <laughs> so what do you think? Um, it's cool. Uh, uh, yeah. Do you feel like you're here? Uh, a little bit. Uh, the video quality is not great, but it could just be my internet. Yeah. Or well, the iPad camera. I'll tell you what, we're going to, Cheeto, why don't you hang up? I gave uh, the same credentials uh, to Jackie. I think she's back in the chat room. We'll let another uh, chatter yeah, sounds great. now have access. But thank you, Cheeto. No for, problem. For, for participating in this experiment. All right, bye, guys. Now, if Cheeto rolls up behind Patrick Beja in Paris, now that, <laughs> that would be cool. That I'd like to see. So, Jackie, if you still have those credentials, go ahead and log in. Cheeto has now logged out. Uh, the boss is waiting uh, for you to log in, and we'll let her uh, play with it a little bit. I do like this uh, 10 immutable laws, which I've never seen before, and I thank whoever. They're all the really chairman. good. Yeah. If a bad guy can persuade you to run his program on your computer, it's not your computer anymore. If a <laughs> bad guy your computer can anymore. alter the operating system on your computer, it's not your computer anymore. If you allow a bad guy to run active content in your website, it's not your website anymore. 
Weak passwords trump strong security. There is no patch for human stupidity, which is not on the list of laws but yet. But does, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's, that's law number 11. Yeah, it deserves <laughs> to be on there, yep. Norton's Law. <laughs> I wish. This is good. Absolute anonymity isn't practically achievable online or offline. Dun, dun, dun. A computer is only as secure as the administrator is trustworthy. Hmm. Hmm. The NSA is solving that one, aren't hmm. they? Yeah, fire the administrators and you're good. So uh, word now that Google Glass, which is currently available only to developers and people who tweet a lot <laughs> uh, for and have 1500 bucks to burn, will uh, be uh, out for a more affordable price. Uh, according to Topology Research's Jason Tsai... Two ninety nine, iPhone Arena. Right. So, so Google responded to this and and told GigaOM that it it would not be two ninety nine, but it would be somewhere between two ninety nine and fifteen hundred dollars. Because <laughs> well, it's 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 funny, right? Because basically, I think I think the article is basically saying that the Motorola, basically uh, Kevin Tofel's writing, he said yeah. this is what it costs to build about to one hundred ninety nine dollars. Yeah, it's like a Motorola Moto Active set of parts from twenty twelve in a different package. Right. Um, basically, yeah. But I mean, is there any any question that it would not because they, they seem to be discovering or like theorizing why it would not be one you know fifteen hundred dollars and that's like a big discovery? Uh, did anyone think it would stay at that price? No. Yeah, but the question isn't really what the top level is. <laughs> we know that <laughs> we've established the highest price that people will pay for it. Right. Oddly enough. Sure. And I, and I should say I paid that much, but I and I, I did. I'm even stupider. I, I didn't did even too. wear them. I gave them to uh, Jason Howell. You got them? Yep. Yeah. And uh, do you wear them around, Miriam? Yeah, I saw you them. And uh, I do. I do yeah. wear them sometimes, especially yeah. at events. I think I'm going to wear them on uh, All About Android just for giggles. Yeah. <laughs> Jason's got them, and you you'll have them. Ron has a fake plastic pair. <laughs> Gina's got them, so it's good. It's a good set. We should all wear them. At you should all, all wear about them. Android. There you go. Um, I, I, you know, at any price, uh, even 300 bucks, I wouldn't buy them. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You already bought them for $1,500. Well, I wear them. <laughs> They're yeah. going to come out. You're going to own a pair. Uh, you I think so? 100 bucks says you're wearing them what within 72 the, hours of them a, being it's shipped. It's a camera. Right, with a little. It's an screen. awesome camera. I, I gotta say, I I I was I I was like glass whatever until uh, our our CTO let me borrow his pair for five minutes. And you like something it? happened that has never happened to me before in like 15, 18 years of testing tech. Is that voice commands actually worked mm. in a way that yes. made me actually want to use them again a second time? Mm. And I was like, um, holy crap! I was in New York for the G two event this week, and I wore them a lot. And I actually found kind of another killer app for them, which I hadn't really tried yet. Watch directions, but not in a car, walking directions. Right. A lot of people love oh the walking. Oh my God, it yeah. was amazing. Because I mean, I know New York, but not that well. And it was fantastic, other and, than the battery life, of course. I was going to say, you get, down in the, you get down south of Houston and you can get really lost in New York. Yeah, um, and because you're never taking your eyes off the road, you're walking around, right. but you're seeing the... Directions up here. I'm sure Leland Yee is actually going to ban Google Glass use in a car or something like that. But um. Yeah, sadly. <laughs> actually, they are in the UK, right? That's what they said. They're going to ban it in the UK. Um, which is, I, I don't know. Do you think you could drive safely with it? I don't think driving no. is the issue. No, I think it's I think it's unsafe to look at the display for a long duration of right. time because it does take your focus off the road. Right. But to me, that doesn't mean you should ban them. You know what I'm saying? It's a responsibility issue. It's like I'm responsible enough not to text while I drive, right? Yeah. It doesn't but you don't mean think don't they should phone. ban that. It doesn't mean I can't have a phone. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm against these kind of blankets decisions right. on, on kind of like early technology when it hasn't even been established if it's actually going to be dangerous or not. Right. How many people need to die, Miriam, before we ban <laughs> these things? Come I on. Think at least at least a few hundred. A few hundred, okay. okay. All right. That's, that's, good. Set the bar. No, that's good. Let's yeah, at set least the establish a criterion, yeah. yeah. Are you going to... Okay, so there you go. Uh, are you going to buy uh, Sergey Brin's new hamburgers? Test tube hamburgers? Oh, man. So, uh, <laughs> Brin has... It, he, he's known for Google Glass and his other product. Google. Uh, Google. He invented that, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, along with Larry Page. You get some credit for that. I'm... Uh, and he has uh, now uh, invested 250,000 euros into the test tube hamburger. 
Is he also not the guy behind the self-driving car? Probably. Sergey's in charge of all that crazy ass and stuff. And behind like that that Bloom Energy thing that yep. kind of we never really heard again. And the loon probably, balloons. Right. He's responsible. Oh, yeah. yeah. The balloon. The, the so base XKC his, cartoon in a while. His card says, I'm in charge of moonshots. Is basically what he does. He's in charge of all the crazy stuff. Profoundly improbable things that I do in like two years, yo. Once you own three private jets, there's really nothing more to do in life, so you're going to have to start crazy, creating some crazy <laughs> stuff. Like self-driving cars. So what's the, what's the point of this burger? That's 250, 100 euros, apparently? No, the burger, no, just the research. I don't think the burger will be that expensive. <laughs> so this is essentially vat-grown beef. It's vat-grown beef. Like, ah, right. Mm, yum. Which is much better for the environment. I uh, thought this would happen less a long cruelty, time ago. Right. Yeah. No cruelty, right. Yeah. Uh, I don't see any reason why you couldn't do it. <laughs> um, I don't really care because I don't eat land creatures. Yeah, so, okay, good, great, a vegetarian. So would you no, eat... No, 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 pescatarian. I, didn't, I said land creatures. Oh, you, you only eat land creatures. No, I don't eat land creatures. You Vegetables eat fish, aren't land creatures? But not land fish creatures. And seafood, yeah. Okay. So would you eat this? This never walked the earth. It never had a face. Uh, I'd try it. I would try it. It's it's not a it's not an animal. I would try it. Yeah. So this would be vegetarian, right? I mean, I don't know what it's made of. Ooh. I'd even just give it. Yeah, see, she's sniffing it. She doesn't she's kind of nervous about <laughs> she's it. She's not convinced. <laughs> I would like to try it. You know what? Once you put some Texas uh, barbecue sauce on it, anything. Awesome. There you My go. shoe tastes good with yeah. Texas barbecue sauce. It's like, sauce. you know, it's like ketchup, right? Anything. You put it on tastes, everything. Yeah. Just, so, what know. is it? Is it oh. stem cells? What are they making it now? I have no idea. I just, there's just How certain things. How long does it take to grow one? Do, do they say? Questions. We've got nothing but questions, no answers. <laughs> How does it taste? What is it made of? How does it grow? How long does it take? Is it good for you? These things we don't on know. That, on that last one, I'd let you guys eat it for like two, three years and then maybe you try it. <laughs> Sometimes a new Start your morning with a great breakfast. No, no, that's not the great breakfast diet. <laughs> I don't think so. Nice. It's got to be better than Wheaties for you. Though. You know, honestly, I tell you what, they're doing it wrong with the hamburger thing. Like, I tell, as a non as a non land creature eater, they're doing it wrong because it's all about bacon. Make it look like You're a fish. Do oh, bacon. Right. Do bacon. Is that what you miss they need most, to grow Miriam? Bacon in a vat. Is that what you miss most? Yeah, I mean, that's. I'd be on there. Like, I'd I'd try the bacon in a vat right away. <laughs> <laughs> Why haven't they, have they made like salmon bacon? Everybody knows it's all about bacon. It is all about bacon. Bacon's like the gateway drug. You give bacon to a vegan, no problem. It's meat candy. <laughs> Just don't tell them what it is. Right. Wow, this fish tastes so good. I've never had fish this good. Can I have some more of this fish? It's really good. See, exactly. He <laughs> gets it. And I'm not even a pescatarian. See, there you go. I have bacon every morning, Miriam. Eat your heart out. Mm, bacon. <laughs> you know, there's some really amazing, I know it's probably going to give, you're probably not going to want to hear this, but there's some really good, like uh, Morningstar makes some really, really good veggie bacon. As, as somebody who eats a lot of Morningstar products and loves the fact that I can get protein in my children without a lot of fat, we suck down bacon like it's going to be taken away. Morning Morningstar, good, Morningstar right, bacon. Patrick? What's that? It's Good that morning star bacon. It's good, it? but it is, is it, made it is not bacon. No, it's, it's, it's soy bacon. protein. Soy protein, yeah. extruded soy. Yeah. It's totally not bacon, but it's crack. It's basically tofu. See, I don't have to eat that because I have bacon every That's morning. correct. <laughs> <laughs> and I like it. Sometimes I have Canadian bacon. Mm, Sometimes Canadian I have bacon. Farmer John's pure mm. pork sausage bacon. Hey man, there was a big old slab of ham this morning <laughs> at breakfast. You you really you're missing. I don't want to. No, I, no, I no. love Morning Star. I honor but, no, vegetarians. I, know, I, know. It's, it's I cool. honor them. It's He's cool. not a vegetarian. I'm, He's a pescatarian. I'm sorry, pescatarian. She but, is she. But you know, I, I I look at it this way. It's like if I ever go back to meat, it's going to be through bacon for sure. <laughs> It's the gateway sure. truck. You said that. Or the porchetta Absolutely. on the roly 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 truck. You go to the, you go to you're it's down there at the San Francisco. The porchetta, porchetta, which mm. fundamentally is a pork kind of thing. Mm. But, but at the if you go to the San Francisco farmers market, there's a guy that's basically yeah. roasting giant slabs of pig in a truck. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I love it. Yeah, see, Breaking Bad. Speaking of gateway drugs, we got to get going because Breaking Bad's going to start here. Hold on. We got to move on. We got to move on. Walt's back. Where's my, can you get my pork pie yes, hat? Yes, NYC. Bert? I want to look the part. Um, 
All right, take a break, and then we'll come back and uh, wrap this up because uh, Breaking Bad. Need I say more? Do you like that show? I've you remind me of that show. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I have no idea what to wow. do with that statement. <laughs> I don't know why. I think Patrick. I don't know. Breaking Bad, Patrick. They go together. I, again, have no idea I what to do. I know why. I just realized I keep waiting for you to break bad. Ah. Mm. Yeah. Any moment, sledgehammer in hand, you could just go. Well, that's somewhat less it depends, terrifying. It's than... all about what kind of car you drive. This is about the, the thing about Breaking Bad is the best part of it, I think, is the cars. They what? always pick really amazing cars for the character. If you're an automobile enthusiast like really? I, as I am, you will totally dig the fact that in Breaking Bad, the cars picked by the for the characters by their you know I don't well, know art director. Well, he drives an Aztec. Really, really, yeah, exactly. Which is it's, crazy. It's totally crazy. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody yeah. drives an Aztec. The only exactly. Aztec I've ever seen on the road. Walt and drives. And don't you think it's and fitting? Jesse drives some great beater car. I don't. What is it? Exactly. I can't remember now. Yeah. But anyway, uh, there's a whole, if you search on the web, there's a whole thread of discussion on the cars of Breaking Bad. Interesting. The cars yeah, it's of a whole Breaking subculture Bad. going on over there. Speaking of Breaking Bad. I think our, our uh, I think Jackie's getting in. Are you, are you there, Jackie? Incoming call, it says. That's wild. Um, our show today brought to you by Gazelle. We are talking about all the hot new phones. Now I want a G2. They didn't say when it was going to be available? Uh, no. Okay, so they said fall, so after September 21st, and then they said before yeah, Black Friday. Must be at home. All right. So that's a pretty broad range. Okay. Now I don't know what to do. Just buy another phone, man. I want I want a I want a 1020, but I don't I don't want Windows Phone. I I'll have to see what the I'm hoping the iPhone will just go knock me out. Then that'll be easy. So here's the deal. What you should do is go to gazelle.com. And get a 30-day lock-in, right? Because then you're kind of you don't have to decide now. But what you do have to do is get the best price for your old phone. So you got a I don't know Samsung Galaxy S3 probably. A lot of you do. Let's just see what that would be worth here. Because uh, it's uh, you know it's timed up. That was a great phone in its time. Great phone in its time. What shape is it in? Well, it's not it's not broken. And by the way, they do buy broken iPhones, but for some reason they won't buy a broken Galaxy. <laughs> 145, look at that. Wow. That's not bad for a Galaxy S3. No, not at all. No. In fact, you get a lot more for some things. If you got an old iPad, uh, I know we're going to see a new iPad soon. So here's the deal. you got to get your quotes now. They're locked in for 30 days. So there's, And you're not promising that you're going to sell. You're just going to get the value, most value possible. They'll tell you they'll pay you this much for that device. Right. Whenever you want to send it in in the next 30 days, they do pay postage. In fact, they'll send you a box with a shipping label and everything. You might as well throw all sorts of crap in there. <laughs> <laughs> just fill it up because they're going to give you money for almost, you know, I mean, look, iPad. Okay, let's see. Uh, iPad mini because we're going to get a new Retina one, right? Right. So let's say uh, that's this is the 32 gig LTE. 240 bucks. Nice. Bam. That's like great value, right? <laughs> so G-A-Z-E-L-L-E -L -L -E is the address. Gazelle.com. They even buy broken iPhones and iPads. That's There's a market, I guess, for the parts. Yes. Uh, and you Ask get me paid. how I know. How do you know? Oh, you buy new screens all the time. Uh, yeah, literally. Yeah, every six, seven weeks. That's good though. The four is very. The four S was very easily re fixed. Thank goodness. I've repaired many of them. Yeah. <laughs> Not for me. I never drop them. My kids, uh, and and Patrick, Gazelle will lock in the quote for thirty days. You get paid fast by ch once you send it in. Of course, by check, by PayPal, or here's a pro tip: if you buy stuff on Amazon, get the Amazon gift card. They'll bump it up five percent. Uh, nice. Samsung, yeah, they sell tablets, buy tablets, not just the iPad, but the Samsung, Google Nexus. You know, I got to sell my old Nexus. What was I thinking? <laughs> uh, Kindle Fire, Microsoft Surface. <laughs> wonder how they've held their value. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Ace, I know, I feel bad. They've dropped the price down on the Surface Pro is 100 bucks. They just can't sell that. Dropped thing. it 100 bucks or dropped it to 100 bucks? <laughs> yeah. They should, drop, they should drop it to 100 bucks. They'd sell a lot if they. Right? Look, the, what was it that sold for 199 the bucks? And they touch sold pad. The touchpad. Yeah. Sold it out. How do you feel now, those of you who bought that $99 touchpad? What you doing with it? It's in my bathroom. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. It's my bathroom tablet. Oh. It's awesome for that. We actually figured out we have a Texilla viewer using a touchpad. Because wow. we made a BlackBerry joke. And he's like, I'm actually watching on a touchpad. I'm, I'm, I'm like, using that. Uh, <laughs> so please do not. I put Android on it. It works fine. Oh, you, that would be yeah. a good use for it. Yeah. Yeah. Can you put Android a late model really Android, like 4.3 on it? Uh, it was 3-something, and then yeah. I stopped yeah, using it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, they 
buy they'll buy your Samsung, Google Nexus, Kindle Fire, Microsoft Surface, or Asus tablets. Payment is fast within a few days of being uh, the item is received. By the way, they wipe your data for you if you if you forget. I know most of you will do it before you send it, but if you forget, don't go. Oh no, because they'll do it for you. Um, they'll even sometimes they up your offer. They say, no, this is an excellent do, Leo. Do this is an excellent condition. We're going to up they, your offer. Do they return you a SIM if you forgot it in there? Sure. <laughs> that would be a bad thing to do, though. Take right. your SIM out. That's actually a good question. I don't know that for a fact. It doesn't say on the copy. And we will return your SIM if you're a doofus. <laughs> <laughs> but it should. <laughs> Love it. I want you to do it. Gazelle.com. That way you can uh, get the next big thing, which is imminently appro approaching. Soon. I got to get that. Every box. week it's imminently approaching. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's one of the problems Apple has. They're iterating yearly when everybody else is iterating daily. How do you keep up? They seem to be making a lot of money doing that. Yeah. You're right. They're not running out of money, are they? Uh, let me see if we have uh, uh, omgpop.com. Even though they tried to buy it, Zynga says you can't have it. Uh, OMG Pop team tried to buy back their site. Mm -mm. Wait, Zynga still in business? <laughs> yeah. I was like, how can Zynga afford not to say no? Yeah, to give us money. The money. Aye, 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 aye. Um, Time Warner CEO says, uh, <laughs> I like this. I don't, I don't know why he's saying it, but saying the fact that the Game of Thrones is the most pirated show is better than winning an Emmy. All right. I, I don't know if HBO feels that way, but Time Warner does. <laughs> but but anyone who ever borrowed a friend's HBO Go password felt so good after reading that story. Yeah, you know? oh, good. Yeah. I gave him an Emmy. Almost better. <laughs> mm. uh, Amazon launches the Amazon Art Marketplace. This has got to be fine art. 40,000 artworks available for, from gallery walls to your walls. Is that eligible for prime shipping? Do we know? If you buy the two and a half million dollar Monet, they'll ship it for I you. Click on the two and a half million dollar Monet. I want to see if somebody's bought that yet. Two hundred thousand dollar Warhol. They need they need same day delivery for those. <laughs> I want it and I want it now. Here's something under two hundred dollars. <laughs> so it's not an Etsy store, is what you're saying. These are actual artworks, fine art, my friends. <laughs> uh, drawings and in ink, mixed media, paintings, photograph. You know, actually, I kind of think this is cool. I would, 75 bucks for a beautifully uh, done uh, photograph, more for an archival uh, print. If it's a picture you really love, this is great. I know, it's just, it's all very motel art at this point. Yes. Well, they're just starting it. Uh, Maybe I, it's actually for motels. <laughs> <laughs> Monet is not a motel artist. Oh, there we go. This is some good stuff. You like the, obviously you're more in the modern art. They got some modern art here. I like cool. Monet. Here's a pink Marilyn, not by uh, Warhol. This is the Richard Pettibone Marilyn. Not mm -hmm. quite as valuable, but wow. but beloved by those. And for sale know. for ninety nine thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> wow. Buy now with one click. Oh, I'm so tempted. <laughs> this is awesome. That's exactly oh. what happened with the Washington Post. Oh my God! They have one click purchases. No, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> And then when you cancel it, reason for cancellation? I thought it was $99. <laughs> they have one click on a $99,000 product. Almost the most expensive episode of this show ever. <laughs> <just happened. laughs> Holy cow. And I'm sure I get a personal call from Richie Pettibone saying, hey, thank you. Um, wow. <laughs> so there's the um, Warhol of Mao, and uh, there's a customer review which I think you should be. <laughs> those, those have to be good. <laughs> that's that's absolutely good. love it. All right, My let me... wife has been looking. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You read it. No, it's better in French. <laughs> <laughs> My... <laughs> My wife has been looking for a birthday present for her hairdresser. She was so happy to have stumbled along this portrait of Madonna wearing a seaweed mask. <laughs> it's absolutely per perfect for the salon. It <laughs> will look terrific at the entrance. Only $200,000. Uh... Yeah. And and one clickable, by the way. And usually ships within one to three weeks, you know, usually <sighs> when they sold it before. So funny. Now, people who bought Andy Warhol's Mao also bought pillow covers, buckwheat pillowcases, and, and the next Washington generation Post. and the Washington Post. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like it. Oh. Yes. 
Love it. So wow. uh, I saw somebody uh, posted on Google+. Plus. Oh, I've seen the new Yahoo logo. No, you haven't. You're seeing many new Yahoo logos. Really? One a day for the next 30 days. September 5th, we will see the, the new uh, logo. So if you go to yahoo.com anytime between now and September 5th, you could see a variety of possible Yahoo logos. All of which are particularly ugly and uh, uninspiring. They're, yeah, they're just like cycling through like WebKit fonts or something. Exactly. <laughs> like every logo so far has looked like uh, like an air freshener, you know? Yeah. Just like sort of Ooh, yeah. like yeah. plant. <laughs> and uh, by the way, they're not getting rid of purple or the exclamation mark. Those those are given. Wow. Well. Just so much fun. What a way to great get a great buzz. <laughs> See all the people. That. You go on the street. People say, have you seen the 30 new Yahoo logos? Oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> oh, wow. Have you gone to Yahoo today? Quite a logo. Quite a logo today. I want, uh, I just, I, I want so much one of them to be Comic Sans. So much. <laughs> <laughs> that would be perfect, actually. <laughs> <laughs> It would be. You know what? It, it says it all. Like, it's settled. Like, it's yeah, done. Yeah, it's comic it sense. By the way, Cheeto uh, apparently uh, went to sit in my office and has tweeted about it and posted that photo on the internet. Thank you, Cheeto, for being our guest. Uh, Jackie Hearn is now uh, driving. Uh, somebody's driving oh my God. that. Who's driving that? I don't know, but there's an incoming call also. It's very confusing. Do we have to accept the call? I don't, I don't understand what's going on there. Jackie, is that you? Oh, my God, it's haunted. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for being here. Run! Miriam Joar, great to have you. Always always a pleasure from Engadget. We'll see you tomorrow or Tuesday, I guess. Uh, yeah, thanks in, for having in me. In studio. I can't wait to see you again, and uh, we'll get you back on uh, Twit real soon. As always, a pleasure. You too, Patrick Norton. My pleasure. Oh, Any time now. Break bad. <laughs> you just feel like Patrick is just holding it back. That's what I mean, Patrick. You feel like... That you're a really, really nice guy, but underneath... Yeah, see? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a knife. Wow. Kevin Rose Scott. had a knife. He did? Yeah, the entire IT department used to have knives. They all carried knives? All of them. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been nicer to him. <laughs> I, now that I see how he throws that raccoon, I'm just... <laughs> raccoon throwing. Wow. Casey Newton from The Verge, nice to have you here. Thanks for having me. First time? It's will fun. you be back? I would love to be You're back. You're not scared? Not at all. I am. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, Patrick Beja from France. Patrick Thank Beja. you so much for having me. Not Patrick. We see you on TNT frequently. Always Absolutely. a pleasure. Thanks. Before we go, you should. there were some, 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 a few things on Twit this week that were fun. You know what we had on the triangulation? No. Stuart Chaffee of Computer Chronicles. Really? The guy who started it all in the terms of computer television. Well, I'll tell you what. Take a look. Previously on Twit, iPad Today. Think of this is a of segue for iPad. Set. Now, Chad, you see, is quite tall. So I'm seeing his belly button. So I'm just going to telescope up here. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, girl. Before you buy. <laughs> so much attention, so much hype around the Moto X phone that I think a number of people, especially geeks, were very disappointed when they finally got the story on the Moto X. Triangulation. We introduced the very first color laser printer from Xerox on the show. It was the size of a Volkswagen. <laughs> it came in on two crates, four engineers <laughs> to hook it up. They press print steam and fire and flames are <laughs> coming out of the printer. All about Android. There were some photos leaked of the Galaxy Folder. This is a flip phone. I have to say that if they released this in the United States, I would predict that this would be a ridiculous success. I feel like there's an inherent desire no. to flip things no. in our society. No. And I think it all goes back to Star Trek and the communicator. I don't know if it's necessarily like opening a device, but when you're angry, you want to hang up. Yep. You know, this pushing is not the same. It doesn't. Twit. It's not your father's twit. We're going for a walk. Going to see the beautiful town of Petaluma, California. Hey, how you doing? What's up? Hey, wh where are you going? Oh, man, nobody wants to be my friend. <laughs> By the way, I did talk to Stuart Chaffe. We are going to do a special version of a twit with Chaffe, Dvorak, and Pornell, the old timers. It'll be a lot of fun. I can't wait oh, for that. Goodness. And there's Seamus. Nice to see you. You joining the show? You're a little late. You missed the discussion over the... NSA's prism spying. Uh, <laughs> uh, do, you, do you have any, anything you'd like to say about that? <laughs> Thank you for joining. <laughs> we do Twit every Sunday afternoon, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. 
3 plus 12 is 15. What time is it, Patrick? It's late. Uh, yeah, I don't even know anymore. Yeah, I can't I, do I'm the math. Asleep. Something it's like plus nine. Like two, plus three. 2300 UTC, something like that. No, it's, yeah, at midnight in Paris is when it starts. Wow, that'd be a great name, name for, for a movie. podcaster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please do join us live if you can. We'd love to have you in the chat room. And as you can see, the chat room is a big part of the show. You can also join us live in studio. You can email tickets at twit.tv. I think, is it ticks or tickets? Tickets. At, they all know because they did. At twit.tv. It was great to have you all. Look, it's, it's so nice. Uh, uh, we've got uh, John Travolta in studio. <laughs> uh, come, on, come on up here. I just want everybody to see that sometimes people... It's actually linen. Dress. If I'm not mistaken. Is that a linen suit? That is and some man who was dressed for Sonoma we encourage County you summer to weather. Dress for the show. He's got a beautiful, beautiful. We we'll give him a ten. The rest of you, you know, go <laughs> come back next time. No, it's great to have you all. And of course, uh, if you can't watch live or be here live, we have on-demand audio and video on the website twit.tv, uh, as well as wherever you can subscribe. The, to the robot is laughing. Is there a robot the behind me? The autonomous experience is laughing behind you. <laughs> That's very interesting. I don't think there's anybody guiding it. Thank you for joining us. Another twist is in the can.